Okay, good morning, everybody. I'd like to call to order the Pasco County Board of County Commission meeting of February 4, 2020. And I would like to remind everybody to please silence all electronic devices at this time. If we could please rise for the invocation and pledge. O oh, merciful creator, your hand is open wide to satisfy the needs of every living creature. Make us thankful for your loving providence and grant that we, remembering the account that we must one day give, may, may be faithful stewards of your good gifts. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Clark, please call the roll. District 1, uh, Commissioner Oakley. Here. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Here. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Here. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Here. District 2, Chairman Moore. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, now is the time for public comment. Citizens are given an opportunity to comment on any item coming before the board during this public comment section. The board also takes public comment on this item to be placed on the future board agenda or other business under their purview. Public comment for public hearing items are taken during those individual public hearings beginning at 1.30 p.m. It is also requested that we address the board that comments are not directed personally against any commissioner or team member, but rather directed at the issues. This provides mutual respect between the board and members and the public. Individuals speaking during public comment will be given three minutes to speak. After stating your name and address for the clerk, the timer located on the podium will start a countdown. After two minutes, one beep will sound, and the light of the timer will change from green to yellow, letting you know that only one minute remains. After this time is up, two beeps will sound, the light on the timer will change from yellow to red, indicating the three minutes are up, and you should close your comments at that time. M Mr. Clerk, we have anybody that's signed up for public comment today? We have one person signed up so far, uh, Heather Stevenson. Ms. Stevenson, if you please come to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Thank you. Heather Stevenson, 38224 Thiel Avenue, but I'm here with another property, 8889 Wire Road, Zephyr Hills. Started developing this property off of Wire Road, and the entrance to the property is an easement that runs parallel to the Thiel Avenue. Over the last world creation, everyone has um, been weaving in and out of the Thiel Avenue and into that easement never really using the entrance at Wire Road because it was um, encroached with uh, Duke Energy's power poles, uh, trees, bushes, mailboxes, and, um, the and the neighbor's property <laughs> at West Thiel uh, So anyway, we cleared this property up and it became a free-for-all with the cleared up down there along with the Thiel Avenue and folks are using everything Thiel Avenue that are not supposed to be using it. So we put a fence up along where the mailboxes were. And we're now, we are now in litigation over it. And we are looking for help from the county. We've reached out verbally and with emails. And they've kind of gone silent in the uh, legal department, defining Thiel Avenue. Because of this weaving in and out, we're trying to restrict who should use the easement. That's the access from Wire Road and not everyone else that's all over Thiel Avenue. And I'm in litigation about it because I can't get a fence up and I can't get the county to define Thiel Avenue. They say, uh, the appraiser's office says that the county owns it. The um, county says they've ceremonious, never really ceremoniously accepted it. While there's a stop sign, a dead end sign, um, and the, and the street name, Thiel Avenue. Um, I'm here for help to just get someone to define this Thiel Avenue okay. for us and so I can put a fence up. Mr. So Chairman. since you mentioned that there is litigation involved, um, I'm going to remind my commissioners that we can't speak on that issue, but I'm going to pass it over to the county attorney if he can direct maybe in the right, is there a direction they can go? Um, oh, county, okay. Yeah, yeah we've, we've spoken to... Um, Nicole, um, my attorney has with emails and so on. I have no Nicole in my office. Nikki? I, I'd have to get my phone to get the email. So uh, have your attorney reach out again to, to, my, to me, and we'll see where we can go from there. But the county attorney's office can't give you legal advice. 
I don't want legal advice. I'm just looking for the opinion of Thiel Avenue. I'm trying to put my fence up on the northern boundary of the property. So, I'm gonna, so what we need to do, again, since yeah. we are in litigation, sure. um, go ahead and, as the county attorney suggested, and have them reach out. And to, then to your office? To his office. Okay. And then if you need to go to another apartment, they can direct you that way too. We need, we need okay. someone to actually okay. tell the people okay. to board is it that they can't. They move it now, get off the yeah, So I need your name and address too then. He's, okay. he's with me. I know, but he's oh. still for the record. William, okay. William Lycom, uh, same address as L-E-Y-K-A-M-M. -E -M -M. Okay, thank you. Thank you so sir. again, I'm just gonna give you that suggestion to go ahead sure. and follow the county attorney's advice to mm -hmm. go that direction and then thank they you. have to put you in touch with somebody else, they can do that too. That's more than we've gotten, Thanks, thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much, have a great day. I don't see a long line, so is there anybody else that would like to speak to the board this morning? Seeing none, we will move on, thank you. Okay. <coughs> The next order of business is the consent agenda. I have a poll sheet with a few items on it today. Uh, do we have any other items before I read those off, commissioners, that you'd like to pull? Okay. So we have C11 withdrawal, C14 withdrawal, C16 withdrawal, C20 pull and revise, C24 withdrawal, C26 pull and revise, C13 pull and revise, C18 pull and revise. I'll entertain a motion for the rest of the consent agenda. So moved. I have a motion. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Same sign. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, let's move down to C20. Good morning, Margaret Smith, County Engineer. We um, corrected uh, the uh, budget amendment for this uh, item and have provided it to you. you know, Margaret, I'm sorry, I don't think we could hear you. Just pull that mic up a little bit. Okay, Margaret Smith, County Engineer. I've made a correction to the budget amendment and submitted it to you in <coughs> revised form. Okay. Any questions? Move approval without a change. Second. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, C26, Carballa. Good morning, Mike Carballa, Public Infrastructure. There was an error on the uh, contract date as well as some clarifying language that was added to the compensation of the agreement. Okay. Move approval without a change. Second. A motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Passes. Thank you. C13. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission. Eric Breitenbach, Internal Services. C13 is a license agreement between the Board and Supervisor of Elections to allow, specified, allow the use of specified county facilities for election purposes during the election cycle. This agreement has been revised to add additional sites and locations. Respectfully request approval of the agreement that includes the revised locations and dates. Move we'll for a note of change. I have, I have a second. motion. I have a, I have a second. Is it Wells? It was Oakley, I believe. I don't think he said it. So I need a second still. Did you I said a second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. I'll post him sign Thank you. Thank you. C18. I can hear the mic. Can't hear. You're just going too fast. Yeah. Mr. Chair, members of the board, Todd Bailey, Chief Information Officer, Interim Assistant County Administrator for Development Services. This item was revised for additional contract amendment, and there's a uh, mistake in the, uh, the contract amount. It was redistributed this morning for $59,182.72. Thank you. Approval of the new change. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's it for consent. Thank you. I have a Walk on, and can I have a motion to hear the emergency walk on? So moved. A motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Same sign, which passes. Thank you. Chief Casson. Right, good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Scott Casson, Fire Chief, Pasco Fire Rescue. Uh, as you know, uh, Medfleet Ambulance Service is one of our uh, licensed providers in Pasco County to provide uh, ambulance transportation. Now, the company is currently in the process of uh, being sold to another owner, and they desire to transfer their COPCN license to that new uh, owner. However, in order to execute that transfer, the EMS Advisory Board first must meet and uh, either approve or reject that, that measure. Um, however, we found out uh, yesterday that the closing date for that sale, which is contingent upon that transfer of that COPCN, got moved up a week which is why I'm here this morning, because it's gonna, that closing is set to occur before the next uh, regular scheduled board meeting. Um, 
So our recommendation to the EMS Advisory Board, which meets on this Thursday, is going to be to uh, approve the transfer of the COPCN license. So therefore, this morning, what I'm asking uh, for is the board to grant a delegation of authority to the county administrator to either accept or reject uh, the, the COPCN transfer following the meeting that occurs on Thursday uh, with the EMS Advisory Board. And then additionally, should the sale fall through, the original COPCN license will remain uh, in effect until its uh, expiration date, which will be next summer, a year from this summer. Any questions, comments? Approval. A motion. Second. And a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed. Same sign. Thank all you, right. Chief. Thank you all very much. Okay, we're going to move on to the regular agenda. Uh, we will start with R1 poorly update Pasco EDC. Good morning. Good morning, commissioners, and uh, uh, Bill Cronin, Pasco Economic Development Council, and Mr. Mike Bishop, Pasco Economic Development Council. Uh, it's my pleasure to present to you today our reports for the first quarter of um, of this fiscal year, 2020. Uh, but also, additional presentation, and that is uh, Mr. Mike Bishop has joined us in the role uh, as stakeholder, director of stakeholder relations. He'll be working uh, with both our internal and external stakeholders throughout the county, uh, our businesses, those that um, uh, we're telling our story to, but also uh, locally and working with stakeholders like yourself. Uh, Mike is no stranger to economic development or the PASCO EDC. He's worked with us in our microloan uh, committee. He's also been part of our CEO roundtables and a successful startup here in Pasco County. So he knows our business well and he knows our stakeholder needs and it's my pleasure uh, to introduce him as he will be uh, presenting in some of the future meetings to y'all. Mike, did you want to say something? Oh, just uh, good morning. Very excited to be a part of this. Um, you know, as Bill said, I've, I've been around it for some time and uh, excited to, uh, you know, impact business in the, in the county and, and do what I can. So thank you. So with that, we'll move on um, uh, to our first quarter report for our memorandum of, of understanding. And these are the activities per our memorandum with the county uh, that's funded through uh, private industry as well as a general fund. Uh, you notice on the on the title page we've got a, a, a photo of a recent win that we had. I believe it was just last month, maybe that the we had the announcement um, of one of our our new companies, uh, Bravado Pharmaceuticals. I'm sorry. Yes. No. Nope. That's Encompass. In. Encompass. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Encompass. We've had a lot lately. So <laughs> unless we put their name up. It's not. Okay. Pardon what we do with our technical difficulties. <laughs> Ta-da, okay. Uh, pipeline is still good, and uh, we've had three successes in the first quarter. We've al already had another win this quarter, so that's gonna bring that up to four. Um, the, if you look at our pipeline, our leads, uh, 22 leads that have, uh, we've got 43 active projects. So uh, that makes me a little nervous in that we have gotta continue to make sure our leads um, are bigger than our active project. And the, the good news is, we've converted a lot of those leads into projects. That means they're truly looking here at Pasco County and we're working those projects. So they are out kicking dirt and looking at sites here in, in Pasco. Uh, a mix of the types of companies that we have here, uh, still really heavy in the manufacturing, which is, is great for us because that's where we get our biggest bang for our buck and how we can work with our future talent uh, pipeline as well too. Again, the uh, uh, wins that we've had thus far, that was first quarter. Uh, we're at 225 jobs in that first quarter. Our overall goal is 1,000 jobs for the year, so we're trending the way we should in terms of um, uh, our, our annual goals. Uh, business retention and expansion. So we do visits throughout the year working with our local companies and seeing what their needs are. Our goal for the year is uh, 90 company visits, and those are unique companies not going to the same company over and over and over again and we've got 29 already in that first quarter so again we're trending correctly there uh, we still need to do some work on introducing those training programs but that is through our BRE department we also have our workforce connect department that are making those connections as well too 
We've attended 14 uh, events on the face-to-face -face engagement side. This is for local engagement, telling people what programs are available for our local businesses and showcasing our programs. And then external to our market nationally is the business missions and development missions and conferences, which we've done five already in that first quarter this year. You'll see a picture of our own Tom Ryan accepting an award at the IEDC annual conference. That's the International Economic Development Conference, and that was for our marketing efforts where we received a gold award for our industry snapshots. Uh, that is the agency, our accreditation agency for economic development, so that was a pretty big award for us in, in recognition. We've made three presentations to local business groups. Uh, and again, everyone is welcome to come to any of the brown bag lunch and learns that we do throughout the year. It is for the general public to learn all the different things that we do, and you get to meet all of our staff as well, too. But we also continue to work at rotaries and summits and uh, local business networking groups. So, Bill, do you bring your own brown bag to the lunch? Is that how this works? It doesn't have to be a brown bag. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you bring your own lunch. Yeah, yeah. You can stop wherever. <laughs> I mean, we want you to actually spend money in our local community, so it's really nice that we see people stopping at the local restaurants. And we move those brown bag luncheons um, throughout the county. So we'll do them at the incubator locations or at our main location uh, in Central Pasco as well, too. Just full disclosure, the brown bag is not provided by you. That's correct, yeah, yeah. There's no tax dollars involved in that brown bag, by the way. <laughs> so uh, uh, as far as marketing goes, I mentioned marketing before. We've earned uh, 1.19 million in estimated earned media value just in the first quarter already. Um, we've been doing a, a really good job in terms of getting the message out. Our following has been up considerably over the last four years. And if we look at some of the analytics from Google and the people that are actually hitting our, um, our website. Uh, you can see where we started at the beginning of this quarter and uh, the activity since then. And it also shows you which countries. Now, we've got a few from Kazakhstan. I'll assure you that is not one of our target <laughs> industries. Those are probably some folks that are out there looking for, for nefarious type activities to break into websites. Uh, <laughs> but India, UK, uh, Philippines, maybe not so, Canada, Japan, China, Germany, all aligned with our target markets where we're actually doing advertising and missions and they're coming back and checking, out, checking us out, which is fantastic. Uh, Facebook analytics, I'll, I'm not gonna go through every one of these numbers, but the most important thing is that all of those increases were based on uh, a baseline that was set in, in this last year. So last year we set a baseline. This is over and above where we were a year ago. So a year ago at this time, total impressions, we have 89,000 more total impressions than we did last year at this time. So we are, we are measuring against that activity and not just showing you uh, general numbers. So this is showing increases. And from the public-private side, uh, from the investor standpoint, we have 80 total investors now, 185,000 raised on the private sector side in the first quarter. Our goal for the year, our fiscal year goal, is uh, $486,000, which uh, uh, is, is a, uh, higher than we've ever had before in, in, for our goals. But last year, we were over 450. We think we can do it. And we're getting a lot of great support from our private investors. Uh, two new investors coming in, uh, Design and Construction Innovations, uh, DCI, you might know them as, and also the Pinellas Realtor Oregon Central Pasco chamber of, um, of the realtor organization. Uh, updates from leadership, and this is some stuff that's coming up. I want to tell you about our task forces. You know that uh, our Industrial Development Authority, IDA task force, is making some final recommendations, working together uh, with Dan Biles and his team to determine what we can do in terms of setting up an IDA here in Pasco County. We started um, the Food Hub Task Force last year. There's so much activity. We're going to keep that for a year. It's not going to sunset yet. Uh, my guess is we'll probably turn over a lot of that activity to the University of Florida as we finish that up, as that seems to be their uh, expertise, and they seem to be the perfect party to take that as we finish, finish it. And then a new task force we started this year is the Pasco Office Industrial Trends Task Force. And that's really to tell the story about our sites and our buildings. When you look at comparable properties 
uh, either along I-4, I-75, we don't compare with others well. So if somebody wants to build a million square foot facility in, uh, on I-75, there is no comparable real estate for them to look at that has the same benefits that we do here. So this task force will be putting together that study and will be a third party that you all can present to the CBREs of the world, the Cushman Wakefields, and others so that they have a non-biased report that talks about the value of our properties here, not just industrial properties, but also existing buildings. So that'll be an annual publication that will come out of that task force. Legislative updates, this, uh, visits with all of our delegation have been underway. Our legislative agenda, you know, is, um, is always a work in progress throughout the session. If we need to make changes to it based on outcomes of committee meetings, we will and we update our stakeholders uh, every Friday during session. Uh, PASCO EDC strategic plan, WIN 2.0, uh, that's our, our next three year strategy, was adopted by our board of directors in December. Uh, we have printed copies that are now available for dissemination and uh, we're including that in our, our speaking presentations through the business community here. Upcoming events, uh, we've got Leadership PASCO Day on uh, March 12th. Uh, also, April 2nd is our annual NetFest, uh, which will, uh, this is our 18th year of doing NetFest. Again, this one has, this is, we don't do business at this, this one is just fun. It's about networking, making sure everyone uh, connects with each other. It will be once again at Epperson Ranch at the Crystal Lagoon. Uh, April 9th, another brown bag lunch and learn that I mentioned earlier. Maybe I would just call it bring it your own lunch bring and learn. Lunch. Uh, May 8th and 9th, Grow Pasco in the CEO Forum. I want to draw some special attention to that event. This is the first time we're doing it. You know, we've got a pretty good tradition of doing successful events throughout the year, and this is one we're adding. Uh, this event is a two-day event. We'll focus on both our CEOs in the community as well as our startups. We'll have a series of speakers, 12 breakout sessions, dealing with everything from cybersecurity to entrepreneurship, um, and a special guest speaker coming at lunch, which, um, are, are we queued up to show the video? Yeah. So I'm gonna ask her to, to, to show the video advertising. Oops. I'm sorry. A little entertainment for you guys this morning. I can picture what he looks like. I'm you you <laughs> can you can envision it. You can picture it. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like very familiar, doesn't or, it? You know, yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll pause for a moment. There we go. No. Nope. Go. At home, they're all saying, "Please stay tuned." Right now, with the screen with the color bars. I think that was in the old days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, pretend you didn't see that, hear that a second ago. We'll start off. Hi, I'm Kevin Harrington, inventor of the infomercial and an original shark from the hit TV show Shark Tank. Now, I'm inviting you to have lunch with me during Grow Pasco, the newest business event for equipping entrepreneurs and executives for growth, hosted by the Pasco EDC's Smart Start program. 
Now, I'm extremely excited and honored to deliver the keynote address to Pasco County executives, business owners, and early stage entrepreneurs, and share some of the best advice I have on how to get motivated, build your brand, and succeed in business. Grow Pasco will be an engaging and empowering event. You'll be able to equip yourself and your business at 12 breakout sessions led by some of the best business minds in the area. Learn about social media, future trends, technology, security, marketing, and more. Now, Grow Pasco will take place on Saturday, May 9th, 2020, at the Hyatt Place in Wesley Chapel, Florida. And I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you. All right. Beautiful. So some exciting stuff coming. Again, two-day event, and this is for all of anyone that's in business leadership, whether they're CEO level, whether they're a startup, there'll be sessions for everyone, and of course the, uh, the luncheon um, should be pretty informative, uh, and you may feel like you need to buy something at the end of it. Hopefully people will see that this is another way that uh, PASCO EDC is trying to take care of our local business and, and help them. Um, I'm going to stop there on the MOU before I head into the Penny for Pasco presentation. Any questions, comments? Questions, comments? See none, go ahead. Uh, okay. And then uh, Penny for Pasco, I mentioned earlier the Workforce Connect program. This is uh, the landing page of our website for Workforce Connect. Uh, I would encourage you all to take a look at it at your leisure. There's actually a tutorial, a video tutorial that shows new users how to use the, da the data and the tools that are included in the page, but we've already had a lot of users, including our school systems, career source, and others uh, that have tapped into this for reports. The Workforce Connect program is all about uh, aligning all of those workforce training programs and showing our employers where those entry points are to enter that spectrum of workforce training programs, but also gives you some ideas of where that talent pipeline is. We work together with all of our workforce training partners uh, AM skills, K through 12, Goodwill, uh, you name it. If you're looking one day for an engineer, you're going to enter one place in this system. If the next day you're looking for an admin, you enter another place in the system, and it's all designed uh, to make it easy. Uh, you know, historically, we, we do our red, yellow, green uh, to see how we're doing with our, our programs. I'm not going to go through every single one of them since you've got them in your, your packet, but I will go over the highlights for each of the programs uh, out there. Ready sites, uh, we've got two project visits to active sites. So far, we've assessed uh, five potential sites. Now, this is in addition to the five that have already been included in our Ready Sites program, which we are out there actively marketing now. Those are sites for industrial companies coming in. Uh, that we're trying to recruit, and we, we market those nationally. Our goal is to have another um, site evaluated and available by the end of this year. Uh, we've got five that we've identified as prospects into that program. Uh, international program, uh, FDI, on the FDI side, in October, uh, we had a mission to Shanghai where we hired a lead generator to set up uh, leads and appointments. Uh, China, again, one of those places, a really, really big market, and with the trade negotiations going on, believe it or not, was a good time for us to visit because they could talk very openly and freely. Uh, some of that trade agreement, and I know that Commissioner Starkey it was, was uh, at the White House when they actually signed the trade agreement uh, with China, that is hopefully going to jiggle loose some of this, um, uh, some of the activity where we can start to see some of those seeds grow into something. Uh, but we still have to wait for the Chinese to actually uh, release funds on some of those industries. For example, they still aren't allowing IT to come over yet and real estate uh, and those types of investments. So it's a two, it, it definitely is a bilateral um, conversation that we're having on, on the uh, investment side. Export trade mission, we have one planning in progress uh, in June of this year. Uh, the state will be taking an export trade mission to Panama. And we're going to piggyback that with Costa Rica uh, on the tail end of that. So the first three days will be in Panama, uh, and then the last two days will be in Costa Rica. We'll use the U.S. Foreign and Commercial Service to set appointments for our companies for those events. And you'll, you'll see some collateral information on that very soon as we recruit our local companies to participate. Uh, Workforce Connect, I mentioned at the beginning, but we did launch the website. 
Uh, we're really proud of it, and um, we're, we're already getting lots and lots of hits, hits on them. Uh, CEO program, we've morphed that into the um, uh, forum that we're talking about. We're going to do more of those type of events throughout the year. Uh, getting, getting people into CEO <coughs> roundtables uh, now is less, there's less interest in that. There's more interest into going events rather than long-term commitments. So we always want to know what the CEOs are interested in so that we can design programs accordingly for them. Uh, Smart Start, we've added two more incubator members at West Pasco Entrepreneur Center. Uh, we're working on that Grow Pasco event and uh, they started using our digital media studio. So we have a uh, podcast studio where if you're a local entrepreneur, you can actually use our studio uh, to do your podcast. And uh, that's been something that uh, that ecosystem is really interested in, they love it. And it's mobile, so we can move it from one side of the county to the other as needed as, as well too. I'll also add that we, uh, we've got our, our permission um, to actually take it in food incubator members now at the Stalling Center. So we are now a licensed facility uh, for food incubation and bringing in uh, new prospects on that side as well too. And then uh, lastly, our enhanced marketing. Uh, we're preparing marketing materials for that fifth site that I mentioned. We're um, uh, still working on improving industry snapshots. That's where we got the award. We got the gold award for the industry snapshot. Uh, I'm not sure we can do better as far as the awards go, but that's not why we do it. We do it to make sure that our prospects have really good, valid information up to date. And then uh, redesigning our brochure for, for Smart Start. So with that, I'll stop, and the rest of it's in your packet, and you can look at your, your leisure. Questions, comments, do questions? We, do we Commissioner have a Starkey? Yes, do we have a packet? Because I don't have one. We're going to send that out. We didn't, I don't think we got this in time for the agenda when oh, it was published, okay. so we'll send okay. out the PowerPoints to you. We'll have one. Good job. You can have mine. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll take it. Okay. Thank but you. Good job. Great job. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Should I give this to the clerk if you guys want to pass um, it? It's, it's a record. Give it to the clerk, please. Okay. Just hand it down. There. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. R2, um, public services, library services, bonds, and fees policy. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Nancy Fredericks. This is Kevin Griffith. We're both with Pasco Libraries. Um, in February is Love Your Library Month. And to celebrate, um, we would like to announce two initiatives. Um, first, we'd like to introduce a fines-free policy. Uh, overdue fines would be eliminated, uh, but we, patrons would still have to pay for damaged or missing items. Um, hundreds of libraries across the country have already created a similar policies. Um, these policies are most beneficial to people um, who are financially disadvantaged and students. Um, we, uh, prior to this meeting, excuse me, we provided you with a, frequent, a list of frequently asked questions and also some information about the fact that it costs us more to collect these fines than we actually generate in revenue. And so, Kevin's going to tell you about our second initiative. Let, let, let's, let's stop right there just mm -hmm. for, the, for the public and, and just for the people in the audience. Um, I'm sure you have a discussion with other commissioners too. When we sat down, you mentioned what the cost was. So give us that number. How much did it cost us to collect versus what we were collecting? Okay, it was $386,000 to, uh, it cost us between staff and accountants and going to the bank, et cetera. And we bring in about sixty-seven thousand dollars in fines this past fiscal year, so it's considerably so more. Our savings would be well, well over two hundred. Right, three hundred. Right? Yeah. Okay. That's the important number for the public to understand. <laughs> to know. Yes. Thank you. And in addition to that, uh, between February tenth and March tenth, we're going to institute uh, an overdue materials amnesty program where if you have materials that are overdue, no matter how long, you can bring them in during that period and those fines will be forgiven. <coughs> and uh, if anybody has any questions about that, we'd be happy to answer it. If not, we'd like to thank the board. So you're going to get rid of that position, the, the guy from Seinfeld? The <laughs> <laughs> Somebody already asked us about this this morning. 
remember that one. The li library detective, I think, library is what he was detective. called. Yeah. Of course <laughs> yes. So we can look into that for you if you're interested. We'd be happy to. Uh, thank the board for the continued support. We appreciate it. Thank you. Well, thank you both. So we obviously do have to um, vote on this. So Move to approve. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same side. Motion passed. Thank you. Okay. Well, we are moving right along, friends. So we're going to go ahead and move on to old business, unless I missed uh, another emergency walk-on, which I think. No. Nope. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Oakley. Yes, sir. Good morning, everyone. Um, I guess everyone knows back in uh, January 29th, we all were participating in the statewide tor tornado drill. There were photos sent in by a tweeter that showed departments in a place. The winners, the top three winners of tornado drill are Dade City Courthouse, uh, Commissioner Moore and I. Uh, did, teams, well, yep. we hadn't got that, but what team we got here? Uh, there were three, Dade City Courthouse, Facilities Management, and Fire Rescue. So, they'll show the different pictures where they were located. Saving the best for last, right here. Well, that. And that's how we hide. And there we are. <laughs> <laughs> that desk doesn't look big enough. Oh. And we're actually... <laughs> We actually were able to get up out of there and, and go on the like business Andy's rest hat. of the day. Is but. that red hat fitting Andy there? That's Andy, <laughs> yep. Well, Andy, so we, we, we ran out of hard hats that we had lying around, so Andy put a fireman hat on that was made for children a bird, a bird king. <laughs> made for infants, yeah. So. That shows your pecking order, Andy. <laughs> Yeah. But we all participated, so we were Excellent. underneath the table. There's no windows in that room, so we were protected during that time. Yep, no it was windows all, under the table. It was table all good. With <laughs> but, uh, that's, that's a lot of economic development. <laughs> hats, too. I don't know what the rest of the commissioners were doing at that time, but we were working. I was in Tallahassee. That, so, that was popping me. But uh, next item I have, I want to uh, reach out. Um, I've been talking about customer service over the last two or three weeks and and trying to make us more a premier county and I've reached out to different people. I, I would like to thank Margaret Smith and her group, a uh, group under Chris Wirt, Mike Pratts, Dennis Wobble Jr. Uh, they did some um, good inspections out on uh, development out in Wesley Chapel. Uh, very professional, very upbeat got the job done and I want to recognize them for doing that. And they're not the only ones. There's others in, in the utility department actually went out for another inspection and the same kind of remarks came back to me that they were doing that. So I'm very appreciative of all of our staff and all that are working toward better customer service. We owe that to our citizens. We owe that to our developers that come in from out of state. We need to welcome them and ask them what we can do to help them get through their projects. And it, it's a different look than uh, we've had lately, and I think it's not one we haven't had before, but we need to all work together and, and be more prepared to uh, do the right thing with our citizens and our, our customers, the developers that come in to build. So I'm very appreciative of all the work and the work that the changes over the last two or three weeks are, are pretty amazing. And I think those go a long way into making us a uh, Premier County, which we've been striving to do. Also, uh, I'd like to thank Tracy and Jordan for and the staff uh, under Dan Biles and his group that our agenda comes out so quick now that it's pretty amazing and that you know what's coming up within two weeks. I actually got yeah. a copy of the agenda today for the 18th meeting. It came yesterday. Draft. It draft. Came, actually came yesterday. Draft. Draft agenda. Yeah. So. But very good, very good move. Uh, I also like to thank Dan Biles for reaching out to a developer and that had issues and it was, was in not just one department, but I think two or three departments. Uh, he got those staff members together and they worked that out so in the right manner. And it, it comes back to me. I get a call that, hey, this is great. This, this is happening in your county. So 
we all are, are part of this county. We all should be very appreciative and happy these kind of things are coming out that way. So it's uh, very positive for the county in the way we're moving forward. So uh, I think, let's see, I think that pretty well covers that. I was trying to think I had another issue. Well, we can always come back to this. Yeah, right. Might come back to this <laughs> if I remember. I hold that one. I, I've been Mr. told Sir. that before when I was chairman. So I'll hold uh, one. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, <laughs> um, I was in Tallahassee last week, and um, we had a very good meeting with um, guys from DEO looking on solutions for Willowbrook that um, Jack attended. I want to thank Danny for really working hard on, on that. And um, we are looking for uh, the quickest way that we can get some money to help buy those people out because that's really just the only solution there is to buy out the 14, 14 homes and turn that into um, green space. And, um, and, and if you want to talk more about Jack, I'll, I'll leave it to you. Um, the, um, while I was in Tallahassee, the, the uh, uh, administrator from Hernando County handed me a copy of the aquatic preserves legislation that, <laughs> that um, was a surprise to some of us. Commissioner Wells, you may have known about it, but. Um, no, I found out about it about uh, yeah. two days before you found yeah, out about it. Yeah, so, you know, I would, I know they're not listening to us, but I wish commissioners in other counties would talk to us when they file legislation that affects our county. It may be good, it may be bad, but we would have liked the opportunity to, to uh, look at it and um and i gave away my copy so i haven't even read it yet but um i did talk to ben albritton about it who's a friend of mine and he kind of likes it so you know we need to get to work if there's things that we need to to uh if we need to weigh in on that um at t barda we have been um talking about alternative kinds of transportation as you know we had the uh what is it skytran guys come here and present um, I've had two meetings at True on the uh, drone air taxis already. Um, one with Secretary Gwynn and, and Joe Lopano. And um, Commissioner Long also has made some inquiries into that kind of travel. And we think that the Tampa Bay area can be a great area for testing of those kind of drone air taxis because you can take off from our airport and fly over water to another airport. And so uh, it's in, in Dallas, they're flying over, um, they're working on flying over heavily congested areas. Um, and uh, then they're up in, um, I think it's Sh Charleston doing some, some testing. Then of course you have the Europeans and other groups. So we're, we're looking at holding an alternative transportation summit similar to the way uh, we had the resiliency summit, a two day summit that we're starting to put together that will probably be in Tampa um, in uh, the upcoming year. So stay tuned for that. I think that would be uh, very interesting for all of us. Um, so I had a conversation with Secretary Gwynn. I've, I've had a couple. And um, Dan, I'm going to send you the emails he sent me. Um, but uh, the, we're looking for the funding to do the overpass at start on the Starkey Gap and um, we've run into some challenges. And so, when is our next MPO meeting? Mm -hmm. um, probably Thursday. Know? I don't know off the top of my head. This week? No, no next week, Thursday week. So, um, yeah, and I, don't, I don't know if I'm here for that. Yeah, I'm That's not true. here for that. But so, I'm going to um, send, send my uh, information over to um, you, Dan, and uh, and who's the head of our MPO now? <laughs> well, Terry. I think it's not a Terry. We're in the middle of Terry. hiring. We're in the middle of hiring somebody. Right. We're, we're in the process of hiring somebody. But so that, that would hasn't me. happened yet. Uh, this week, hopefully. Okay. So I'd like to get with the two of you because I won't be here next week at the MPO meeting, and um, we need to discuss this the funding challenges. Um, okay. I just need name, name the title for the Nectarios Pitos Planning, Planning, Planning and Development. Yeah. Com yeah. Com yeah. Com yeah. Commissioner. Yes. I guess my question is. If I recall right, and Terry, correct me if I'm wrong, the 54 at Suncoast Overpass and the 52 at Suncoast Overpass are higher priority than the Starkey Gap Overpass. 
That's a penny for, pe those are penny for Pasco projects. This is a um, Sun Trail coast to coast project. And the DOT was gonna look for some money uh, for us, the secretary, because um, I didn't wanna go through, if we try and get a legislative appropriation, it's just gonna mess up our own transportation mm -hmm. money. So um, Secretary Gwynn was looking for ways to help us because there, people are, are getting stuck out there in the middle of State Road 54. It's not a safe crossing at all. Um, so, but we, we don't have it listed right for them to look for money for us right. in okay. our MPO. That's probably an MPO discussion then. Right. County Administrator is correct. The priorities were on the, <laughs> along the Sun Coast. The what? You mentioned the Sun Coast uh, crossings. So those are the priorities that are in the Right, 54 Priority. is right. in design, I think, and gonna go next year, so. Right. Um, but that's, that's, isn't that under um, a penny for PASCO money? Well, I, I don't know the answer to this. Yes, we, we're funding that all ourselves. We're not asking for DOT to help fund that. I don't know. I can't follow that. No one carries in charge is. of the trail stuff, so. How much that's is another that project? bone we have. All right, so moving on. Um, I'll, I'd like to get with the two of you. Um, so it's come to my attention that we have no more money for wayfinding on the sun, on the coast to coast trail that um, we had set aside some money and it's all um, gone. So I would really like to hear from whatever department is gonna make them, gonna tell me where the signage is gonna come for the coast to coast trail. That is the county's responsibility, each county has a responsibility putting the signage up for the coast to coast. And um, then uh, I am having surgery. I have basal cell cancer on my nose. And um, the only time my doctor appears to be able to fit me in to take off the whatever he's sewing onto my nose is the morning of our workshop. So I'm trying to get him to uh, let me go to whatever hospital he's at in the afternoon because he does surgery that day in the afternoon and that he can take off whatever bandage he's sewing on to my nose. Um, but at this point, it's in the morning, so I want to be at that workshop. And so I'm asking if we could just stay we'll flexible on the time and maybe if I can't be there in the morning that we flip it to the afternoon. What's the date of that workshop? The 25th, I think. 25th. When, when do we have to? notice it by well the week before i mean the wednesday we've been putting the agenda out wednesday the weeks before so it's kind of so what like next doing. week and the next week i'm flexible you got, are yeah, we flexible? want you there so yes we're flexible you need yeah. to be there yep yeah. i'm so, flexible as long as you don't move into between <laughs> march 10th and 18th i'll be gone so she no her she was asking if we could be flexible when we hear Probably something that's important to her in the workshop in the morning or afternoon, if I'm not correct. Move the app. It's either Let right now it's a morning workshop. Usually we're done by lunchtime. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need to go. Well, this will be a long discussion. It's a, so it's a full day workshop. It'll be. I would assume this is going to be a long discussion. What What is on the workshop? Right time? now we're going to give you the revenue projections for the next fiscal year, and then we the discussion about multifamily, multifamily. and mobility fees, yeah. et cetera. So I definitely want to be there. Um, so we can we can start it at noon or one. Well, let us you get yeah. here. Let's just make it easy. You get back, to have, get your assistant, get back to us, in my office, and then we'll and then we'll schedule it perfectly. Okay. When you find out, okay? yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll we'll adjust accordingly. Right, because I I'm heading out. My son-in-law is going from. The, Major to Lieutenant Colonel. So I'm going to his pinning ceremony, then I'm going to Washington. Um, was that everything? There's something else on here. Okay, I guess that's all I have. Commissioner Wells. Yes, um, and I'm going to follow up with what Catherine said, but I just like to say we had the community cleanup in Moon Lake over the weekend. Um, last year, last time we had 100 and over 180 tons picked up. This time it was 160, so the number is going wow. down. But it was a great event. I mean, it was great to see the community come together, and they got a grant to help feed the employees and folks that are dropping things off. It was just an um, it's it's 
it's really cool to see. And I know Bay News and I was out there, and they spent a lot of time talking to the employees, which is cool because they've been there all three times and listened to the employees, see the residents that they've seen every time. And so it was neat to hear the perspective from our team and that, you know, they did an unbelievable job. Mike, I mean, seriously, they're, they're awesome. Um, you know, Code was out there too, but it was, it was great. I think it was Public Works and Powers team. So. I, I think that team was our team of the year. It was, yes, because yes, so, a lot yeah. of the guys I had seen yeah, yeah. here. So just want to throw it out there. I know, again, it's just neat to see them get involved in the community like that. Um, so talking about um, what Commissioner Starkey brought up, and I'm assuming Commissioner Mariano is going to discuss it as well, because um, I know the three of us have had conversations. <coughs> but as far as this aquatic um, bill, I'll give you guys copies if, if I could. I don't need a mo motion just to have a conversation, right? You already have a copy, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so I, m myself and Keith, you know, I heard about this beginning of last week. Um, and from what I understand, Commissioner Starkey is the, the, the commissioners in the other two counties had no idea about it either until it was actually filed. <laughs> um, so I was on a conference call last week, myself and Keith Wiley with Citrus County, their county administrator, their team, uh, Commissioner Kennard, um, which I know then they spoke to Hernando County, a, a lot of the same questions, you know. Basically what happened here, team, is we got carved out. When I say we, Pasco, Hernando, Citrus got carved out of aquatic preserve back when they did it. Um, so every other county is part of this aquatic preserve except for the three of us, which was due um, because of Duke Energy being in Citrus and being in Pasco. So long story short, and again, keep in mind this bill, I'm a little bothered that we weren't even aware of it. I know there was some stakeholders that said they were in favor of this, Wendy Longman being one from Pasco. There was very few from Pasco. There was a lot from Citrus with the, with the guides and so forth, but very little with Pasco. So I know I reached out to Wendy and said, hey, are you actually in favor of that? And she was like, well, I was until I started reading the language. So I, I kind of have some concerns, and here's some concerns that I have is, talks a lot about dredging. I think that it's going to restrict us as far as trying to do work, not to mention the dredging that Commissioner Mariano has talked about. Um, I think it's going to limit us with boat ramp expansion. Um, and I'm not really, a, basically in my opinion, what this does is overregulate um, the process we already have to go through for docks where we approve it, we give a permit and they still have to go through um, uh, Department of Anyhow, there, there's a process already. This just makes it another layer. And this is going to be a board that's appointed by the governor. I'm not saying that that's good or bad. But some, some questions I have, like if you go to, I don't know if you want to look at it. I'm not expecting you guys to read it now. But if you go to like line 57, you know, minimum dredging and spoiling of submerged lands may be authorized, may be authorized for existing public navigation projects as public necessity are for, you know, preservation and preserve according to the expressed intent of this section. Again, this stuff's already regulated. So by DEP and Army Corps, uh, you know, I know Hernando County put a change in wording that says that they would like to see is grandfather and the projects approved by the state expenditure plan for the golf consortium that Commissioner Mariano is on. We, we don't want it to affect those projects, but I just, again, I really wish that we would have had an opportunity to speak on this, you know, because it's already, it's, it's already gone, it's up today in the House, it's already been passed in the Senate, the second committee yesterday, so it's getting close to making it to the floor, and then we haven't even talked about it. I just, I, it, it seemed to me like the cart was before the horse on this. I'm not saying that it's not a bad idea. I mean, I think if we can have more protections, for seagrass, and, and it all comes from the Pew Foundation. Those are the ones that, that were pushing it, and those are the ones we spoke to on the conference call. And they, Citrus County had some very pointed questions. They kind of spoke a little vague on it, but said they can make changes. But it just, what gets me is we're having this conversation if it's already been submitted. I, that doesn't make sense to me, but as a board, I, I think that I would love to see maybe all of you review it let us know your opinion and then i think we can decide okay do i'm assuming we can decide after it passes i don't know how that works or i need to get with ralph or does it need to be done because ralph thinks it's going to be approved like tomorrow but so, well, it's in rules right now yeah so it's gone through two committees in the senate hasn't been heard by the house i don't think at all i don't think it's moved 
No, he said it'll be hurt. Rules. It'll be hurt today in the house. So the house is going to hurt today. Yes. Okay. We'll so double check that. I just, again, I think that our opinion. Well, I know our opinion matters. Again, Keith knew yeah. nothing about it. Adam knew nothing about it. Citrus and Hernando County knew nothing about it until it was filed. So I just think it would have been nice if they would have sat down with each, each you know, county. Because again, there is some good things in here, but the last thing we want to do is, in my opinion, over-regulate, but also we, we want to protect. You know, another, another thing that kind of bothers can I, me. Can I jump yep, in just go ahead, real quick? Go ahead, Chairman. Hey, no, Andy, Andy, will you go get Ralph on the phone real quick and just, if you don't mind, and find out if who's going to hear this in the House today? Uh, that way, my suggestion would be during break, you need to call House members. And I just, like, well, here's another, yeah. like, verbiage. Yeah. I know Commissioner Marion is going to say a few things, too. <coughs> but, like, here's another thing that I don't want to say bothers me, but it's a concern. I've spoken to FWC. They knew a, a little bit about it. They're still going to have their jurisdiction. But it talks about being able to protect all these things. My thing was, like, yeah. how? How are we going to get more funding? Or do they have additional funding yeah. that can help us? How are they going to? regulated how they're going to enforce it i mean i like some of the things you're saying but they don't have the staff as far as dep now to to do it and another verbiage i have concerns with it says you know on line 123 again i think you all can review it when you get a minute but regulation of human activity within the preserve in such a manner as not to interfere unreasonably with lawful and traditional public use of the preserve such as sport fishing commercial fishing, boating, and swimming. I don't know how they even have any regulatory. That's FWC. So it concerns me that that verbiage is even in here. That well, what saying. about line 92? Yeah. It um, says that construction, replacement, or relocation of a seawall is prohibited. There's, and we, like I said, there's several things that are concerning. Um, I think it look, from the big picture, I think it looks good from the outside, but when you start digging in, you talk about docks, there's another layer of bureaucracy you have to go through to get a dock done, which I don't know that that needs to be. Again, I like the protection of seagrass. I think that makes sense. But again, I still have some questions, but with that, I'll... Well, Commissioner, yeah. let me ask you, do we know, who's the um, sponsor in the house? Dr. Masulo. Yeah. Who is? Dr. Dr. Masulo. Yeah. Oh, he is? Yes. Yeah, he's from Citrus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Did you find Andy? Let me let Andy come to the mic. Andy Taylor, Legislative Aide to Chairman Moore. Uh, it is in the House Agricultural and Natural Resources Subcommittee at noon today. Um, so we, we have that. And Ralph also said that the bill sponsor is happy to work with us. Commissioner Wells, you may have been aware of that already, uh, that the bill sponsor in the House is happy to work with us. Thank you. So start making calls. We can get out. We get the done with this early. You'll have time. Mr. Sheriff, if I could, I could say there are so many things in here that are negative, potentially bad. Uh, supposedly, we're supposed to well, we're supposed to get a map from what this aquatic preserve actually is. Uh, when I talked to Representative Masulo about this bill going forward, I says we got dredging projects going up and down the coast. It won't affect like a Hudson Channel or Gulf Harbors. But when I look at areas like Westport, Driftwood that haven't been dredged before officially, I may have some big issues with that. If I'm gonna to go to do SunWest Mine or even any other project that goes out into the Gulf a mile or two, yeah. I'm in the middle of that aquatic preserve. They could be affecting what goes on there. Even if I wanna to try to straighten out the Leisure Beach Channel, which has a dangerous job to it, they wanna get it fixed out, that would come under the same jurisdiction. Seawalls, which we wanna see done, we we'll want people to protect their property. This is creating a whole nother bureaucratic mess we don't know. The thing that bothers me the most with the way this thing was brought through is us not getting notified at all. And we got commissioners that are right there on the coast. We got a boating captain here and nobody has been involved. Even you know, with all the work you've done for scalloping for this area, and all of a sudden we don't know how that's gonna affect things that we're gonna to need to expand our infrastructure coming up with boating. So this clearly is not in our best interest. Um, I've asked him to just pull us, if we could pull us yes, out. Yes, pull us out. Pull us out. Let's go look at it. Maybe we'll get it involved in it next year. Mm -hmm. But for right now, for our protection, for us to go look at it, from everyone I've talked to, they don't like it. They had, by the way, f like 12 people listed in Pasco County, business people, that said they were for the project. When I called them each up, the four that I knew really well, described to them what was going on, what we were looking at, they had no idea it was going to be this, this offensive to the, to the county. So their support, they'll actually pull it back. So I think the best thing for us to do before noontime 
Let's just get a simple letter just asking us to pull it back. We'll consider it next year and make that letter and let, let Ralph go bring it to them and let it read into the record that Pasco County won't be pulled out of it at this point in time until we have a full review of it because none of us were notified. And I think it's got to be that strong, that simple, that Let's do it right now. That's I mean, what I'm saying. Have it ready for Ralph. Let him draw it up so the chairman can sign it and just get it, get it right up to him so he can bring it to that meeting and be a speaker, be listed as a speaker saying, we want to be pulled out at this time. We were not informed of it. We're not, we're not comfortable with it, with all that we have going on in the county. That will be a motion. And I. Second. Discussion. So for, for, the, for a letter? For a letter. Yes, for a letter. Signed by the chair. And I, I don't disagree, but I, again, I, I think there is still a way to work the verbiage. I would really love to see all three counties say, hey, you need to carve us out. We don't. Well, then there not, isn't anything. In well, there. that's all my, three that's, are that's my out. point. I mean, Citrus <laughs> County had the most input by well, charter they want captains. It, they can it. You know, well, that's, again, I. I and Hernando's got some concerns there. They may be doing the same type of thing we're talking about doing right now. So we, we may not be alone, but either way, we need to protect our coast. And again, another bureaucratic uh, bad implication for us or bad effect of us is, is not what we want to see happen. We need to take a quick stand on it. And again, if I had the map now, I'd, I'd, I'd be okay, talking so about it. You guys are knowledgeable about happen. this. If you want to somehow get a letter from when it, come, when it get a hold of one of your assistants, to have the letter drawn up real quick, email it to this office here. We'll do it. We'll have it signed and you have to send it over by noon. I can do it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Jack, who, who are we under? Are we under? We're under you, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm good. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, are you going to talk about leisure lane? The park. Um, I can't. Yes. Good. Okay. Oh, Hold on. Yeah, let's keep it going. If we One more thing, sorry. Do this. Um, I have people here that we have to hear before. I, to. Hold on, I need to see how to word it. Sorry, Jeff reminded me. Or if you want, just go ahead, Jack, and then I'll, I'll come back. Okay. If you don't mind, Chairman, just something real quick. All right, so as far as I was going to talk about, I was thinking of Leisure uh, Beach in my mind first. But So Leisure Beach, Signal Cove, I was uh, at the meeting last night. They're, they're going to come to the DP restrike me, the first one we're having all, in quite a while, to talk about the dredging. They want to. Tuesday, uh, Thursday, I mean, Thursday, 6 p.m. at the government center. So they're going to they're going to come out and just you know see it. They're they're excited about the dredging that we have going on across the board. Um, I tell you, Catherine, uh, Commissioner Starkey was phenomenal working with DEO. Uh, I mean, when we were up in in D.C. and she had brought up this thing about the um, Lakeside Woodlands area with the caverns going on out there, she was phenomenal bringing it through, driving it through, getting everybody's attention there, driven it through to to go to the to Florida and Danny was incredible uh, in helping coordinate the, the meeting up there and the meeting went very well. We're not supposed to get into too many details with it, but I just want to you know, thank you, Commissioner Starkey, for, for the great work you're doing with that. And it's going to lead to another conversation from another conversation about we may have some possible funding for the Leisure Lane area as well. There's a source of funding that could be out there from Hurricane Irma that may let us be able to go tear the rest of the properties relocate the people, pay for their relo relocation in this project, put the infrastructure in, set all the groundwork in to go forward. Uh, Mike Sutton, who's up in Tallahassee today, was trying to set an appointment up, couldn't change his other points to make that work, but they're going to be going back up within a couple of weeks and put a full presentation on. We could have a great success in that area really quick uh, if we get this funding together. So, Commissioner, um, I drove through there last week, and it is worse than when we started. Mm -hmm. It is just... Reminds me of the hills in Caracas, you know, 30 years ago. I mean, it's bad. People are passed out uh, on the lots. They brought in old furniture and they're sitting there and they're lighting fires everywhere. Um, and it just, I, there must have been 40 people just living on those lots, just right there in plain sight. And uh, dumping everywhere. I've, I've never seen anything so bad. So I just want to say, I am willing to dip, in, dip into whatever we need to to just fence it up, clean it up. We cannot let that fester like it is right now. No. Um, I saw, I think there's three homes under construction. Yes. Um, and uh, which is great. I, I mean, I'm willing, that was a loan to Habitat. Like I'm willing to write it off. Whatever we need to do, I think we need to throw some resources, whatever we can, get that cleaned up. I think it's attracting more people than um, right now in the condition that it's in. 
and, and I'll, I'll agree. I mean, Habitat's done a great job cleaning up. All the volunteers that have done all the volunteer time that's out there has been a, a great start. We do have that infrastructure we've got to go deal with, and I think now we've got a, a path forward. I think, uh, to a county administrator, we need a grappling truck to go out there. Yeah. And picking up all bad. the couches, all the stuff. They've made a couple of memorials in one of the areas that had a fire as a couple of people died in there, et cetera. They put memorials in there with trash everywhere. Yeah. We need to go full steam in there, go clean that thing out there, get the grappling truck, get code out there, get the sheriff's department so everybody's protected as well. I mean, literally, those people, I think I told the story, I was, I was went to the rope center trying to get some homeless people to go to work, and they were all out working, so none of them could actually, I couldn't hire anybody to do any work. And then it was the following weekend being down there. These guys are laying out, yeah. either doing the drugs, doing the drinking. Yeah, right there. Nobody's trying to help themselves, guess what? The lady that beside that had to go put a fence up, that had her bib broken, that was on NBC, we need to go take care and protect that neighborhood right now. I, and, and if it, it means cleaning out in behind it, there's a big ditch that's behind there, um, Mr. Carbella, let's go look at cleaning that ditch out too, because that's another way where they can hide. And let's go trim all the Brazilian peppers that are in the whole canal that we have jurisdiction over, we can go clean it out. And that'll only help the whole area. But we need it, to go full steam ahead that we're not gonna be having people sitting on the open yeah. Tearing up the neighborhood. It's unbelievable. And I would say that those piles of trash that are in there are probably breeding rats. Um, I, I can't imagine there isn't a huge rat problem out there. <laughs> so I, I just, you know, I'm willing to loan ourselves some money to clean it up. I just right. want you to know I'm, if someone comes up with a solution, I'm all in. No, I'm glad you're the quickest thing. Do we need a motion, Mr. Bowles, or can we just take care of it? No, we're working, getting out there and do what we need to do. Community cleanup over there. Maybe it's, you know. And this is this is bigger. To well, yeah, we well not not let me let me ask you a question. Right now, Habitat is building a bunch of houses, but I don't think they can build. I don't think that one agency is going to be able to build it all fast enough. So I want to know: Is there another um, agency we can get some land to that could build maybe the multifamily part um, that Frank Design? You know, he's got some townhomes or whatever. Let's bring in another agency, not just Habitat, so we can move faster. And I've had that type of conversation as well. They can go that way. The infrastructure is going to be the key. We're going to try to change her from septic to sewer and go through that. That's got to get done first, leveling all the homes. They're willing to work with other people in the area too. But I'll tell you, down in Pinellas, I get a project like this. They're doing 16 a year. I mean, there's ribbon cuttings all the time. So this is not like a, the old West Pasco where they do one or two a year. These guys can do 50, 60. All right, so yeah. in two years' time, we could actually clean this whole thing. And master plan, like Frank Starkey was down there. So, what, set some master so how planning much up is there. the septic to sewer? Uh, sewer that's 1.5 million. It's 1.5 million to buy the lots. And I did talk to Mike Sutton, go try to buy, get all the options you can for all the other properties and try to like get them on paper because he didn't want to do it in the sense of. He, Who's he, Mike Sutton again? He's the head of uh, the West Pasco Pinellas Habitat. Oh. Uh, great, great guy. He's, he's full steam ahead trying to get stuff done. So he'll, he'll go out, he's gonna go back out now, take the next two weeks and try to get those options because he said, I can probably get more, but I can have somewhere to go with this project. So I think now that we've got the potential to make this thing fly, he's excited about going and trying to get all those other properties we can out there. And I was serious about, um, even if the county buys, builds it, um, giving one of those houses to a deputy mm -hmm. and parking him there. Yeah. And maybe a code enforcement officer. Code enforcement, we, got, we got, code code actually have our guy ready to go. Yeah, so. Yeah. No, thank you for bringing for bringing that through. And I suggest you guys when we're on the east west side again, Commissioner Moore, Commissioner Oakley. I've seen the picture. Mm -hmm. you, no, drive through. You can't believe it. I you can't. I trust you. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of looks like the Walmart little drive. Yeah, right <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, like out of a movie. Yeah. Like South Central yeah. LA. That's it's it's definitely not good. Mm -hmm. um, on another note. Um, as far as construction goes, you've heard me talk about this before, trying to bring code back in to do our 50% rule. Uh, I guess our surrounding counties, not just Pinellas County, our surrounding counties actually have programs in place where if you pull a permit to do certain work on a, on a, a permit, once that permit expires, that 50% rule restarts again. We don't do it that way. And I would like to have staff come back with a presentation to us how we're doing it, how Pinellas is doing it, and all the other counties around us are doing it. That's, that. Because that's I think we're killing ourselves on the coast. I mean, it's something that they should be able to do pretty quick. Okay, and so there's direction if we could have a presentation on that. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, and I know Commissioner uh, Moy, you want to, uh, Chairman Moy, you want to bring something up, but I would like to say maybe it's time for us to We're take a look at all these stormwater projects we have, working with, with uh, Swiftland, 
let's maybe get a presentation as far as where we're at with each one. And then I saw you pulled the Forest Hills one to get it kind of ready for keep us in qualifications, but I just want to kind of maybe get us fully updated. Thank you. Good. Mr. Biles. Yes, sir, I have a, uh, just a couple quick things. Um, one, I want to shout out to the clerk. The clerk, clerks for a cure presented animal services a, a check for over $8,400 oh, last nice. week as a donation to animal services. So, you know, Mr. Clerk, thank you uh, and your organization for that. Well, and we'd like to recognize that was uh, Dr. Paula O'Neill uh, started Clerks for a Cure and was a not-for-profit that she headed up, uh, which has net since wound down, and this was a dist final distribution to um, Animal Control along with Thomas Promise and some other yes. not-for-profits to right. uh, wind down that organization. But um, again, our people were happy to be part. So thank you for that. Uh, just other update the board. Uh, we're continuing to partner with our nonprofits. Um, Human Services expanded their case management with Volunteer Way, and we're running a case manager now with our, out of their Congress food bank location. So again, continue to work with our nonprofit partners to expand the services and help out uh, those those that need those services. So and that's all I had, sir. Mr. Steisneider, County Attorney's Office. I'm good. Thank you. Good Clerk's Office. Yes, sir. Uh, members of the commission, uh, Clerk Alvarez Souls wanted me to share some, a couple of things with you. Um, we hosted, together with the uh, Education and Recycling Department of Utilities, uh, two big shreds, as we call them. Uh, we could go Saturday the 25th over in Newport Ritchie, which uh, resulted in about five and a half tons. Uh, 265 vehicles, and even in the rain here in Dade City last Saturday, we had 83 vehicles and an additional two tons, um, all part of celebrating Data Privacy Day on the 28th of January. So, um, very happy those were annual events for the clerk's office. And speaking of annual events, coming up this uh, week from Friday, here in front of this building, uh, Historic Courthouse, will be our annual Valentine's Day wedding ceremony. Uh, so if you know someone that's looking for the opportunity to get hitched, uh, we'll take care of them. They need to go by and, and get their license and, uh, and make arrangements at the clerk's office. Also on Saturday, the, March the 14th, um, both at the West Pasco Government Center offices and the East Pasco Government Center offices of the clerk is Passport Day. It's, we're open on a Saturday to assist families in getting passports, especially with the upcoming summer travel season coming up. And they need to bring their identification, citizenship, uh, evidence, and all of those items, and they can get more information on that. And we'd like to invite the commissioners to be part of uh, two, again, traditional days. The clerk's office has uh, been sponsoring in conjunction with the district school board. Um, and is pleased to present the fifth annual student inspired art exhibits and these are the art items that you see in the uh, judicial centers um, and uh, those will be on Tuesday the 24th uh, here in date or at the West Pasco Judicial Center that's Tuesday the 24th at 5 p.m. and then on Thursday the 26th at the Robert D. Sumner Judicial Center here in Dade City and uh, the art gets refreshed every year and it's amazing the number of folks that go by and truly enjoy uh, the art it takes it kind of takes the edge off of uh, some otherwise difficult buildings uh, to be in for most folks so we thank you thank you sir all right mm. before i move on do not leave if you don't mind when, when i'm done we have to take our yearly pictures so uh, yeah. the team is ready to take those uh, the first one, um, I'm going to ask my fellow board members to uh, motion to waive fees. Our local chapter of the American Cancer Society is hosting a concert for a cure once again, like they do every year, uh, on February fe Saturday, February 15th, from noon to 6, Atlanta Lakes Heritage Park. All proceeds benefit the Suncoast Relay for Life team. And as usual, as they've done for the last five years, request we can waive the park fees for the event. If I could have a motion, please. So moved. Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same side. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, Real quick, if you weren't able to be at the hard hat tour, we do have a little bit of drone footage we're going to put up okay. real quick. So you can take a gander how things are moving along. So tourism along with um, 
facilities, Ajax and Rad Sports hosted a hard hat tour um, for the media in the morning, and we had one in the afternoon for some local folks. And as you can see, it's coming along nicely. So I want to thank Ajax for opening the construction site for that day because they had a, they still were able to work, but that it held them up a little bit. So we appreciate them. Um, and just for the record, we really haven't, you know, they haven't gone full force in promoting the facility just yet, but they have begun and they've already have six events booked with 20, over 2,400 room nights confirmed. Um, and I did have a discussion with Rad and I think they had contracts for about five more events that already went out. So hopefully those will come back soon. We're we putting solar on that roof? I don't facility. I don't think there's any solar that I'm aware of. Shit. Yeah. So I know we're not live right now because of spectrum issues, but if anybody watches this in the future, if you're looking to host any type of a <laughs> cheerleading or a basketball or gymnastics tournament, we're open for booking. But it looks great, doesn't it? Okay. Right. It's huge. It's a, well, you go inside that place, as you saw. I mean, yeah. it's doesn't do it justice from looking at it outside. Well, um, tell you when what. does the hotel start going up? Because it doesn't look like it's under construction yet. It's, it's not. Um, that will hopefully go under construction within the next soon. six. Soon. Soon, yeah. I don't. They're, Can't they're site planning for date, review. Yep. And, you know, so they have permit submittals in for review. Do we know what kind of um, sporting events? They've already booked? been booked. I, I don't have which ones have been booked in front of me. I, I cannot remember. Do we remember, Andy? Yeah, sorry. Andy remembers. Andy Taylor, uh, legislative aide to Chairman Moore. Commissioner, just off the top of my head, and I have that list I can share. They have a volleyball tournament next Martin Luther King Jr. weekend. There's a uh, basketball tournament. I think that was the biggest room night attractor uh, Christmas this coming year. There's a few other volley volleyball so far is but maybe three or four of the events, uh, different tournaments, but I have that list I can share with you. So, as you can see, things are moving on great, so uh, won't be long, right? We're looking at early, mid-July, as long as uh, the weather agrees with us. So thank you for that. We're, I think we're good. Um, so here's something very important. We had um, talked in the past, and uh, we received an update in May from our uh, Census Bureau representatives. Since then, our staff has been working hard on the census efforts to make sure everyone is counted and obviously Paso County gets their fair share over the next decade. So we want to take care of that, obviously, and do the best we can for our residents. Um, so we as a county, we need to be ready to commit forward and move forward with our complete count committee. Um, we talked about that briefly during that meeting. And um, I think you remember I suggested that the commission um, appoints those representatives. Um, had a meeting with the team last week. Initially, it was thought, hey, they wanted maybe six to eight people. My suggestion was, how about we move it to 10 and allow each commissioner to appoint two people from their district. That way we have equal representation across the district. So instead of six to eight, I suggested 10. Each commissioner do two. Make sure those appointments are in your district that you appoint. And, there's a, and, there's, a, and there's a letter um, that should be at your table. Um, so, again, it'd be called the Complete Count Committee. In the role that will help develop and implement a creative census awareness campaign that will motivate each person to respond to the 2020 census. It's obviously, in our, especially in our, in our hardest to reach um, areas and in, in, in groups throughout the community. Uh, community Committee members must be aware that there is a time commitment which they will serve until initially until April 1st of 2020. Um, moving forward, and after that, there'll be, some, I think, some, some times where they'll be called into uh, action, if I'm not correct. What I do have are representatives from the Census Bureau, so if somebody would like to come up here, if you're ready, <laughs> you can uh, briefly uh, detail my fellow commissioners, again, exactly what this committee will do. But I will ask you, I will implore you, to bring those two names to the next board meeting, and then we'll have full approval. Just take into um, account that, again, we will need to all accept those members, make sure those are people that we all feel and will be comfortable with. 
the last thing we want is debate on members that we all appoint on the dais. Good yes, morning, sir. Commissioners. I'm Jeffrey Jenkins, Executive Planner, Long Range Planning. Uh, and I've been appointed to be uh, the staff liaison uh, to the Complete Count Committee. And just to briefly go over what we've done so far, we've had quite a bit of, of uh, discussions with uh, Ms. Channel Lloyd, who came before this body before with some information on the census. She is the uh, state of Florida's liaison uh, from the census. We've also had conversations with uh, Mr. Ryan Boney, which uh, Mr. Boney is actually a Pasco resident, but he is a regional uh, representative of the uh, Census Bureau. And we al also have two gentlemen in the audience that I'll, I'll recognize, uh, Mr. Thomas Carroll and Michael Radford, who are also Pasco residents. And um, they're involved with the actual count and the hiring of the census workers, et cetera. So they actually are responsible for the count and it, it's our goal to create the committee to make sure that we are uh, including everyone because that's uh, vital for uh, mostly for money. Uh, and we're trying to raise the, uh, the percentage of response for the census. So, so far we've been working with the local census count uh, people and we've already identified areas that were undercounted in 2010. So um, we've also been working diligently on marketing materials and doing the back, background uh, work so that once the appointment is made by the commission of the representatives, we, we, we can roll this out quickly. Uh, and as was stated previously, the, the count day is actually April 1st. Uh, and then there's various opportunities afterwards when they, uh, the census worker, workers were actually do door-to-door -door canvassing, um, et cetera. So if uh, you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I think if you look on page three, commissioners two, more of the complete count committee, um, that's something you can afford to your possible um, committee members, or you can read that out to them. You know, it says CCC. CCCs utilize local knowledge, influence, and resources to educate communities and promote the census through locally based targeted outreach efforts. CCCs provide a vehicle for coordinating and nurturing cooperative efforts between tribal, state, and local government communities and the Census Bureau. And the CCCs help the Census Bureau get a complete count in 2020 through partnerships with local governments and community organizations. Obviously, again, there's something else that's on the line. I think we all know in addition to funding, um, there's the possibility of additional congressional seats, um, obviously, in the state and with our growth that's happening in this area, uh, when I can only assume that there's a chance that could be close by if we do a complete count. So it is very, very important. If we can get additional representation in this area, it's not a bad thing. Thank okay. you. Thank you, I appreciate it. Any questions? All I'll ask if you can bring those to the next board meeting for approval and we can move forward. So with that, we're going to be adjourned Wait, until, I, I whoa, okay. Questions. Well, let's go fast. I need pictures, and we got to make do what we're supposed to do for this um, situation we got going on that starts at noon. So, uh, two minutes, please. Okay, so uh, uh, County Administrator Biles just told me that uh, he had talked to Ralph Lair about what I had proposed we, we do and made the motion on. He says he recommends we soften it up, so let me read this to you if this sounds okay. Then we can have Ralph just do this. Please. Uh, the Pasco County Commission was not. Um, informed of this bill ahead of its introduction. Pasco County is concerned on its ramifications to our coastline. We are willing to work with the sponsor before the next year, or next reading of this bill. I'm fine with that. You guys fine That's with that? Yep. That's the softened up version? That's the softened up. Okay. So again, you got limited time here. So is your, what's somebody in your office writing that up now? Okay. Yeah. You said, okay. You, you said well, you I think it needs still a little wordsmithing. Marie, um, Marie can put it together. But okay. with that intent, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Mike Commissioner Wells. Wells had something, or Commissioner Stark, you said you had something Yeah, I have two right? things. Well, um, okay. Right quick. So, Mike Carballa apparently did a killer presentation at the Resiliency Summit, and I keep hearing it from everybody. 
and I wasn't able to get there, and I don't know if you were there on time because we had there. like the MPO meeting or something. No, you no, we're, you, we're at a no, board we had meeting. a board meeting. Yeah, we had a board yeah. meeting. It was so I, board, I would like to that. have Mr. Carballa give that presentation to I like us. That. Yeah, um, and then um, I, uh, I'm very, I, I, I think I along, along with the rest of the board are very pleased with the the efforts of the co-location at Starkey Ranch District Park and the library and the school district. But I don't know of any other project like it in the county. And that was something that was really important to me when I was on the school board. Ray Gadd and I started the co-location committee. We tried to do it at Connerton. It didn't really work. Um, so I, wanna, I want to, uh, I would like us to reach out to the school district and say that we, we just true. want to you know, make sure that we're doing more projects like this as they plan their schools and we plan, plan other other amenities. Uh, Nectarnas Pito's planning and development. Um, thank you for the comments, Commissioner. We do work with the school district in current planning, uh, particularly when we're uh, working on new developments and MPUDs to co-locate the facilities for schools, parks, libraries. So, and a more recent project okay. um, that has that sort of coordination um, has to do with Project Arthur. We, we did that quite a bit in that project. And that was just approved. Well. With over, the school district, because I thought they were doing charter schools in Project Arthur. But if they, if oh, there we, are some schools in Project Arthur, is my recollection at least. Okay, excellent. I, I hope they go to the level of what we've done um, and would love another community center like what we're building, because I think that's going to just be outstanding for the citizens. Okay, those are my two things. Commissioner Wells. I can always bring it up later if you'd like, but well, so just real quick, there's a quarter acre lot that we own and we've owned and we used to maintain it out in Moon Lake. Um, so I would like to, I spoke to Keith about it, Parks has it, but we haven't done anything with it. I would like Parks to be able to start maintaining again so the kids and the community can use it. So I just need a motion to accept maintenance of the park parcel on Poplar Street and Drome Drive as depicted sure. on the Moon Lake Estates Unit 13 plat recorded in Plat book six, page seven. That would be my motion. It's Second. a park now. Uh, what, what is it right now? It's okay. just a second lot. discussion. Yeah. It, we have Our a second. second. Yeah. It's it's a lot that's in Moon Lake um, that we used to maintain. It's been a long time, uh, and there's a lot of kids that are right there. Just it's it would be nice to have like a picnic, just a passive right. little something. Keys on board. His okay. folks got to go out there to cut the grass at the other park anyhow. So excellent. Okay. okay. Okay, so I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thank you. Do not leave. So I need the commissioners, if we could get down here, and then I will need um, the county attorney and county administrator to stand by because they will jump in after we take the five of us. And I do have one more thing, but I will wait till this afternoon. Well, you can talk now while he's setting up. Okay, so I don't know if all of you heard about um, Henry McHugh, who, who lost everything in a trailer fire. Um, this time last week, 90-year-old World War II veteran, mm -hmm. uh, lived in Moon Lake. So I had an opportunity. He literally lost everything. He got out of there with his pants and his shirt. Oh, that was yeah. it. So I've been working with the family. We're raising money through Empowering Pasco's Veterans. He had no insurance. Oh. Just a great man. I met him out there with his family last weekend. Very humble. Um, obviously, as, as I find most veterans, he doesn't want to ask for help. But we're doing everything we can. So. Ultimately, I've got everything to be donated. We really just need to find a mobile home for him. It's going to be the easiest way, zoning and permitting wise, to put back on the parcel. He does not want to go into assisted living. He wants to be back on the same lot. So I'm just throwing it out there. If anybody knows of a used mobile home, I know we were talking to the owner of BJ's in Hudson. He's trying to help, but that's the only thing we need. And then everything else is going to be donated from Lennar to a bunch of different Very business nice. owners in Pasco. It's pretty exciting. So I just wanted to bring it to the board. If you happen to know anybody that, or the community, if you know anybody that has a used trailer mobile home that we could, you know, we'll come pick it up. We've got everybody to do that. I have I an just, idea. It's, yeah. uh, and we can, I, I don't know who here knows where we are with it, but we're buying out 12 mobile homes off of Elfers Parkway. And I think we're getting close to that. So okay. maybe we can get one and move it. Maybe but that may take a few months. Well, it means code, right? You don't want to put in something that. That's the biggest thing. Is like 1995 or 96, we changed the yeah, code. Yeah, the year. But you'd have to get up to wind. And again, I've got folks that are willing to help make that happen. I just, I wanted to make sure you all are aware. It's an idea, like uh, there. So. You know. 
That's not a bad idea either. If we could find out about that, Dan, kind of where we're at. Okay. Where, where is he staying with now? With the trailers. He's staying at his uh, friend's house. So he's, he has a place to stay, but he really wants to be back there in Moon Lake. Was he living in a trailer? Where he was, was yeah, by himself. And like I said, he lost. I mean, the community's come out. I would tell a lot of stories, but they're, I know the that news channels have gotten with me, but we're trying to let a few nonprofits do some things for him first, but just a great man. I mean, just, okay. it's, it's, very, it's terrible. Thanks for all you're doing, Commissioner. Yeah, yeah. And so take two minutes and freshen up for you. Freshen up. <laughs> you got some powder? <laughs> Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call back to order the Paso County Board of County Commission meeting of February 4, 2020. And I'd like to remind everybody, please silence all electronic devices at this time. And now we'll proceed with the public hearing agenda, starting with item P1, ordinances, Matt, or clerk, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> clerk today. Uh, do we have proof for item P1, please? We have proof of publication of this item in the Tampa Bay Times on uh, December 27th of 2019. Thank you. Ms. Hernandez, it is your show. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, uh, Commission members. Um, item P1 is PDD 200327. This is actually um, on your SIRE attachment. The agenda memo is for a continuance, which is continue to February 18th, 2020. Uh, Board of County Commissioners meeting at 1.30 in Newport, Ritchie. Thank you, ma'am. But is, since it is was published, I do have to ask for public comment. Um, I will let you know if you do speak today to this item, you will not be able to speak at the date it is continued. Would anybody like to speak to P1? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to continue. Move to continue. Second. A motion, I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, on item P2, we have proof of publication on January the 19th of 2020 in the Tampa Bay Times. Item P2 is PDD 200265. It's an ordinance amending the boundaries of the Asturia Community Development District pursuant to Chapter 190 Florida Statutes and amending, amending Pasco County Ordinance Number 1417, providing for miscellaneous provisions, providing for an effective date. On this item, we're asking you to adopt the ordinance by roll call vote. Thank you. Um, any questions from the board at this time before I ask for public comment? Seeing none, I have nobody signed up. Would anybody like to speak to item P2? Item P2, this is a roll call, so I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. I have a motion, I have a second. Um, Mr. Clark? Uh, District 1, Commissioner Oakley? Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey? Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells? Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano? Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore? Aye, motion passes 5-0, thank you. Okay, so moving on to Public hearings. One sec here. Would you like to read? Mr. Chairman, we have proof of publication of this matter in the Tampa Bay Times on December 27th of 2019. Mr. County Attorney. Would you like me to read the procedures? Yes, I would. Thank you. There are two rezoning agendas, regular and consent. Staff will present each application to the Board of County Commissioners, if staff or planning commission has recommended approval and there's no opposition, the application will be considered by the board without further presentation. If staff or planning commission has recommended denial or if there is opposition to the application, the applicant will be given five minutes for presentation. The opposition will be given three minutes for each individual or five minutes for a group representative. And the applicant will be given three minutes for rebuttal. Any individual disagreeing with staff or planning commission recommendation or anyone wishing to object to any condition of the rezoning may at this time request the petition be pulled from the consent agenda, in which case that application will be heard under the regular agenda later on during the meeting. Otherwise, all rezoning applications on the consent agenda will be approved by a single motion and vote. If you wish to speak to any petition, please give your name and address and whether or not you've been sworn for the record. These are quasi-judicial public hearings. The law in Florida is that mere public support or opposition of an application is insufficient for this board to take action. Please limit your comments to those criteria found within the board's land development code. Mr. Clerk, would you like to swear them in? 
on the, uh, I guess I'm a little bit confused. Are we on? Item? Well, see, there's, there is no, um, consent, no consent today. today. Right. So go ahead and okay. um, we'll go ahead and swear. So if anybody would like to speak to the remainder of the items that are on the agenda, I'll ask that you please rise and be sworn in. If you're going to speak, you have to be sworn in now. If you do not, if you're not sworn in, you're not able to speak. Raise your right hand and the clerk will swear you in. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you will give in this matter is the truth, so help you God? Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, Ms. Hernandez. Again, we don't have anything on the consent today, so go ahead and P3 with the continuance. <coughs> Item P3, PDD 20-0223. This is a continuance of February 18th, 2020, BCC meeting at 1.30 p.m. in Newport Ritchie. Okay, so P3, I know some people were here to speak to P3, but this is a continuance. If you'd like to waive your right to speak at the next meeting, you can go ahead and speak now. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion for continuance. So move. A motion. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Same sign. Motion passes. Thank you. Proof was noted uh, on the front end, but it was published in the Tampa Bay Times on December 27, 2019. P4. On this matter, uh, also published in the Tampa Bay Times on December 27, 2019. Good afternoon, Tammy Snyder, Planning and Development Department. Can you pull that mic up just a little bit, please? So we can, there you go. There you go. Is that better? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Okay. Evans Covington, MPUD, PDD 207436. There's a location map. There's Fort King running north and south, and then there's Covington Road running east and west. Proposed as a rezoning request from an AC agricultural district to an MPUD master planned unit development district to allow 193 single family residential dwelling units on approximately 207.81 acres. Here's their master plan. Presently the subject site is vacant or unimproved. The subject property lies within the countryside area of the villages of Pasadena Hills and is not within one of the villages. And due to the rural character of the area, there are no public utilities currently. Therefore, each lot shall have private well and septic, which shall be permitted through the appropriate agencies. And as there are no public utilities right now, the, a specific condition has been added to address the design, construction, and maintenance of an alternative water source for fire rescue safety purposes, which shall be coordinated with the fire rescue department and approved prior to construction plan approval. And the Pasadena Hills Planning and Policy Committee heard the item on the consent agenda at the December 18th, 2019 meeting. Several citizens did make comments and voice concerns, including roadway conditions, paving requirements, and congestion. And those concerns were discussed, as were the MPD conditions and the villages of Pasadena Hills requirements, which determine construction timelines and parties responsible for the uh, construction and access and transportation improvements. The committee believed the concerns were adequately addressed and unanimous, unanimously voted to recommend approval to the BCC. Mr. Andrew Pittman was absent and Mr. Emmett Evans recused himself. And the proposed request is consistent with the Pasco County LDC Chapter 400, Subsection 402.2 Zoning Amendment, MPUD Master Planned Unit Development, and with the applicable provisions of the Pasco County Comprehensive Plan. And so with that, PDD recommends approval with conditions. Thank you. Before I move on to the afternoon, the applicant's representative, does anybody from the board have any questions or comments at the time for staff? Seeing none, I would invite the applicant or the applicant's representative to come up and speak. Mr. Toole. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Joel Two, Two and Associates, and I represent Evans Properties, Inc., which is the owner of the property. Ladies and gentlemen, just a few brief background points, uh, since I believe there's some members of the public here who may speak. Uh, this property is, has always been within the village of Pasadena Hills district boundary from the beginning in 2008 when the plan was adopted. Therefore, it's always been contemplated as a property uh, that has the right to seek zoning entitlements uh, within that district. It is also very important to note that all the way back to 2008, even when Pasadena Hills was adopted, this parcel already had a Res 1 land use designation. So it had a pre-existing land use designation of one unit per acre even before the adoption of the plan. Consequently, this application technically does not rely upon and have to increase any density 
under the area plan. We're not reaching up and pulling any additional density down. We simply are asking to zone consistent with the original Res 1, one unit per acre designation. That's why it's a large lot development, less than one unit per acre. Uh, that's the reason for the density <coughs> requested. Even though we aren't using additional VOPH entitlements, this particular property owner, as you know, was one of the original POG members. They have properties in several villages. So we actually volunteered as part of the application process to still sign on to and abide by all the terms and conditions of the area plan, including the imposition of the surcharges and all of the other requirements. So on a voluntary basis, this property owner proposed to do in the MPUD what we're now going to be asking everyone outside the villages to do when you see the VOPH update in a couple weeks. So they were kind of the trendsetter in that regard. Um, we comply with all of those regulations. We're consistent with the comp plan predating VOPH. Uh, as to the questions about Fort King and Covington Road, uh, entirely consistent with the VOPH regulations, this property owner is agreeing and is obligated to MPUD to provide its portion of the right of way for both Fort King Road and for Covington. We have land on the east and west side that's part of this MPUD, so we actually will be providing right of way for Covington on both sides of the highway. And we also are obligated under the access management study that was approved uh, by your transportation staff. We've agreed, even though they weren't technically required by the study because of the hill and the sight lines, we've agreed to construct as a mandatory requirement a northbound left turn lane on Fort King and a southbound right turn lane on Fort King so that we're protecting um, that, that sight line on that hill for, for cars coming at some speed uh, in the future for safety reasons. So with that said, we agree with all the staff conditions. We worked all those out with staff. We abided by the traffic requirements. We're consistent with the comp plan. We're voluntarily abiding by the VOPH area plan, including the financial plan. And we urge you to uh, support the approval as the policy committee recommended unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Two. Thank Any you. questions for Mr. Two from the board at this time? Seeing none, this is a public hearing. I do not have anybody signed up. If you'd like to speak to this, I am going to ask that you come to the podium now. State your name and address for the record. You have three minutes. Good afternoon. Hi. Nancy Hazelwood, 34110, a nice place. Um, I remember when they put the countryside in place. I remember a bit differently than Mr. T does. I remember that this was kind of supposed to be a protected area for the citizens there. They were really concerned about Pasadena Hills at the time being approved for 40,000 units. So I have your comp plan and policy FLU 6.2.2. This is what it has to say. The delineation of the urban village land use classifications within the Pasadena Hill study area is based on the concept of a countryside line defined by the easternmost boundary of the village. Land use as depicted in figure PH6, Pasadena Hills 2050 future land use plan, which supports a community vision to establish a clear transition from urban character west of this delineation to the existing rural development pattern east of the delineation. The countryside line is delineated to be approximately to the ridge that additionally serves as a visual demarcation transition areas from urbanization in the west to the east. Now, um, Pasco County shall respect the existing rural development pattern of the countryside area as depicted Pasadena Hills Land Use Vision Plan when reviewing requests for the comp plan or rezoning applications. Countryside area was evaluated during the Pasadena Hills study and determined to be an area predominantly built and or plaid in a rural development form within a closed stormwater drainage basin. Now this is interesting, this next one is policy 6.2.4. Fort King Road, Rural Scenic Roadway. Pasadena, Pasco County shall amend the development code December 2008 marked out to 2012 to establish specific standards for rural scenic roads in Pasco County 
that will assist in the protection of the existing rural development patterns of the area. The Land Development Code provisions creating these standards show address the following, and it goes down to list trees, canopies, all this. This ordinance has not been written. It was put off to 2012, and then it wasn't written. I was wondering how they were complying with that. And I would love it if the Board of County Commissioners and the staff think about doing an ordinance <coughs> for a countryside. It's, I believe it, this whole countryside was put into place <coughs> in 2008 to say, okay, Pasadena Hills ends here, and this is to protect the people over the other side of the line. Um, <coughs> that said, your staff did excellent job on this, and I know their land use in zoning, it's probably the best we can hope for. I just hope that after this you take it into consideration and maybe approve an ordinance for it. Thank you all. Thank you for your time. Anybody else like to speak? Seeing none, um, would the applicant like to follow up? Oh, right. <coughs> Name and address for the record, please. Shane Williams, 37243 Covington Road. Um, and you've been sworn? Yes, I would. Thank you. Um, I, the other neighbors here on the east side of Fort King along Covington, uh, we have a different project in the works, and that's the paving of that east side of Covington. Um, during that process, the 40 acres that you see on the east side was rated at a certain uh, residential rate, which was one unit or one house per 10 acres. And the formula for who's gonna pay for that side of Covington to get paid. Um, if we're changing the rating to this new plan, which is one per acre, uh, we would like to see that area uh, readjusted to do the, the 26 units that it's gonna, gonna be involved there instead of the four that it's currently rated at. Um, also, there's a curve in Covington there. I don't know if you can really see it or not, but you see the red line and then it goes up a little bit and then a white line continues. Um, I know the attorney spoke to the Evans property people donating land for that road but I don't see where that happened because there would be no curve there if they actually had donated any property I just moved there a year ago and I saw the flags were out and it went right along the Evans property line and then when they surveyed it it didn't go into the Evans property line at all it went further into Brent's property one of the other neighbors there to cover the existing 50 feet for that road. But we, we all know, um, you know, change is coming. We know people are coming. Um, I think mostly we would object to the amount of people that are there. If we go to the one unit per acre and then you apply the 65% rule, I don't see how they're gonna put 200 homes, almost 200 homes on 200 acres. That's all I have. Thank you so much. I, so the applicant or staff want to answer the question in reference to the road. I can answer that. Be Go ahead. Joel, two for two hundred. Oh so wait, someone, I'm sorry. Did somebody else? No, I'm sorry. Okay, you guys got. Okay, anybody else that wants to speak, I need them lined up now. Anybody else want to speak? This, I'm cutting it off after this person. Okay. <laughs> Nobody else. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My yes, name sir. is James Martinez. I live at 37246 Covington Road. I've lived there since 1996. I happen to also be the petition leader for a PVAS program where we've asked the county to convert East Covington Road to a public road and pave it. There's 11 property owners that have participated in this process. Okay. However, there's only three homeowners, there's only three residences along that road. 
The cost, estimated cost of the paving project is $220,000. And that cost is gonna be borne by those few property owners and homeowners that live on Covington Road. Because the assessments that were made for the paving process was made prior to this new rezoning development that surfaced, Evans is only assigned a cost of $5,388 of the $220,000 paving. Okay. In other words, the three homeowners or the 11, well in this case it would be 10 property owners, are gonna pay 97% of the cost of that paving. And we're gonna pay for it over 15 years. I know we can't see 15 years ahead, but I can assure you that real estate's moving very rapidly. And there's some time in that interval of time, the Evans project will take off, and there could be as many as 26 homes that will be utilizing that road that was paid for by three homeowners or half a dozen homeowners. I feel it's very unequal, very unfair. And we're only asking for that to be reconsidered. In the ordinance, there is a, there is a, there is a, a permissive language at the bottom of the ordinance that allows this body, if the county <coughs> administrator makes a recommendation, to make an exception to the distribution of the expense for the building of the road. I would like to ask you all to consider that on behalf of these homeowners that are gonna be burdened by this $220,000 expense. The road will benefit everybody, including the Evans organization, but it would be mainly those new homes that would benefit from the road, but they're not paying for it. And that's what I have to say. That's, those are the numbers that are taken from the statistics that were given to me by the county. The dollars. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. If I, can, if I can ask the gentleman a question. So you're, petition has not yet been heard by the board, correct? No, sir. We were told that we would have to be, we would be advised of a hearing, and then after the hearing, it would come to the board for the, the, the county, Board of County Commissioners to adopt the program and adopt the road. But uh, we haven't been informed of when that hearing or the county board of commissioners would be hearing this. I know that you will be receiving it because we've been working with the people uh, Mr. Ainsley Caldwell in his area. I started this in 2018. Okay. Been working on it for almost two years. We're pretty far along. Okay. But this but development came up very suddenly. I hope you're saying it was passed. So give me one second, sir. Yes, sir. Because we want to we want to make sure we're all on the same page here. Okay. So you. I have Commissioner Oakley it's, stating it's that it was passed. It's my understanding, and Evans Properties got one for ten on on four properties that had to pay toward the road. At the time of the PVAS and the vote of the PVAS, they only had one, four properties or four units mm -hmm. toward that PVAS, and mm -hmm. that's been approved by the group, and I guess it's waiting to come to us to be finalized. Okay, so it so, has not come to us to be finalized no. yet, so we have not voted on it. As far as I know it. Okay, I don't think give it me has, one second so. here. So, Mr. Biles, do we have somebody in, on the team here right now that can confirm? So, well, so my point Ainsley's not here. But. My point in asking the question is that this analysis is, while you might be able to put a condition on this MPUD, if the MPUD approval substantially alters the the ERUs for Covington Road, um, and you have not been, and it has not been approved by the Board of County Commissioners. It would be adjusted. They can start, well, they, they would have to send new letters out, but they could do a recalculation of this project, send new letters out, and then bring the revised project back before you. Okay. Do you understand what? Yes, sir, and said? that would okay. be all we would ask. Is okay. You have Mr. a Chair. more equitable distribution of the expense. We, we welcome the development. We welcome progress. We would just want a fair distribution of the okay. cost. All right, thank you, sir. And I'm, gonna, and I'm gonna let you go ahead and take a seat. I'm gonna go back to the commission. Thank you very thank much you, for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Commissioner Oakley. I think, does the votes go by the units? Isn't that the way the votes go on the ERUs? On the it goes if so, and you change that, instead of one or four units they would have, they would end up having, and if you're mm -hmm. one acre, you'd have 40 units. So your ERUs would go up. 
if the commissioner is saying that their their votes in the petition would go up, their amounts that's that true. They vote, they but vote. their ERUs that they'd be paying to the project would it's also go, would also go would up. also go up. Yes. yes. Yep. But isn't each ERU a vote? Correct. Yeah. Okay. That's what that's what I was yeah. trying to get right. So they would have forty votes. For Correct. The Evans property. They would. Right. That's how it works. Yeah. You can't, I can't, I can't talk from the audience. <laughs> Sorry. No. But um, so I will I will, well, I will I will go back to the county attorney. Right. And the county attorney will state how the PVAS works. So, so my point is for this particular rezoning, if the issue is an inconsistency with the the how this will all be appropriate, uh, how they, the road will be paid for, that's best addressed in your PVAS process, um, not in the not in the rezoning, not, not in, in the matter issue. that is before yeah. you today. Okay. So when this comes in front of us for a vote on the PVAS, at that time, that's where that will have to be. So considered. I would I would suggest that the administrator be asked uh, or or the assistant county administrator for infrastructure be asked to look at this particular project before it comes back before you mm -hmm. to see whether or not adjustments need to be made and how those adjustments legally are made where they are in the process i i have that note okay okay duly noted yep yes sir thank you before I bring the applicant back up, is there any other additional questions from the board? Uh, well, I, I do have a comment on that. Okay. It might need to be a board-initiated PBAS. We're not there yet, ma'am. Let's, let yeah, us we have to find yeah. do yeah. this and see what we need to do. Yeah, I'm just saying. Okay. Okay. okay, I will bring the applicant back up. Joel, too, again, to an associates for the applicant. I'll try to work in reverse quickly. On the PVAS item, uh, Evans Properties participated last time according to the then applicable PVAS rules. If we start over and do a new one, we will again participate in that process and abide by the PVAS rules. So there's, there's no issue there, and I concur that that is independent of the zoning approval, but I acknowledge on the record that they will go through whatever the legal process is for the PVAS determination. Um, so that's, that's not an issue for us. And then going back to the, the first speaker's um, comments about the countryside area, just to clarify, her, her point was why I started my presentation by emphasizing that this parcel had Res 1 land use prior to the VOPH area plan. And that countryside area is to define the segregation between those urban village centers and the rest of the land to the east. And in fact, all of the villages, the village centers and those more dense areas are west of that countryside area, just as the plan requires. However, the plan was very clear in 2008 and still is today that any property owner, not just Evans properties, but you've had a number of other property owners in the countryside area, that if they had a pre-existing land use designation, they are entitled to ask you to zone within their prior designation. We did not take that away from them, and that was a major part of that plan. We assured everyone, and that included Evans Properties, as for this parcel, that they didn't lose their pre-existing Res 1 land use designation. So all we're asking you to do, as I said, is to implement that. Uh, and with that, we have nothing else unless there are any further questions. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Seeing none. Back to the board. Move approval. Second. So, a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thank you. <coughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to P5. P5. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, we have proof of publication of this matter in the January 17th edition of the Tampa Bay Times. Oh, <laughs> 
and we have oh, yeah. oh, several folks. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. All right. Hi. Good afternoon. How are you guys? Um, just so everyone's aware, this item is being reheard due to some uh, complications with the required noticing procedures. Just so it might look familiar. Uh, this is the location map. Uh, the proposed development is located at the northwest corner of the intersection of Bell Lake Road and Alpine Road, uh, roughly one mile east of Land Lakes Boulevard. Uh, so this is the zoning uh, surrounded area. You'll see uh, PUD and MPUD to the south and to the east, and some lighter residential surrounding it to the north and west. The future land use for the entire area out there is Res 6, so that's six dwelling units per acre. Uh, the applicant's uh, request is to rezone from R1 Rural Residential Zoning District to MPD Master Plan Unit Development District for the development of 27 single family detached residential units. Uh, this is the master plan for the project itself. I'm going to leave this up just as a visual while I read through the findings of fact. It's probably easier to uh, talk to. Um, so the site is approximately 9.468 acres of vacant, unimproved land. Of that, 7.93 acres is upland and 1.52 acres are wetland. The applicant is proposing 3.40 dwelling units per developable acre. Uh, the applicant proposes the main access to the subject property shall be off of Alpine Road. Uh, the project area is located within the central market area and it's just outside the boundary of the urban service area. So some more background. Uh, the Planning Commission heard the item at the November 21st, 2019 hearing. Uh, the item was pulled from the consent agenda as there were public comments. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended denial with the justification that the proposed development, specifically the lot sizes, were not compatible with the surrounding area. Uh, after the Planning Commission recommendation, the applicant has increased the lot sizes from 35 feet to 40 feet wide, as well as to further restrict their project from the original request of 32 dwelling units to 27 dwelling units. Uh, so staff continues to recommend approval with conditions for the project uh, for the reasons of you know, the existing future land use out here is Res 6. Uh, all the areas calls for a density of much higher uh, than the applicant proposes and staff feels the transition of density is appropriate in this area. Uh, in addition, in an effort to provide a buffer between the existing larger lot residential homes to the north and the proposed lots, lots a uh, conscious effort was made to cluster the new lots closer to the right of way, creating a natural buffer of, ex of existing trees, the category three wetland, and the new stormwater pond. So as you can see, the homes are kind of clumped mainly towards Bell Lake Road and away from a lot of the residential homes to the north. Uh, so with that, planning and development uh, continues to recommend approval. And if you have any questions. Any questions from staff this time? <coughs> Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. On your improvements on Bell Lake Road, the uh, eastbound left turn lane in, mm -hmm. um, did you ever look at anything doing a, like a like right turn lane on Alpine Road going to the west? Um, I'm not sure of the improvements on Alpine. I know they will have to improve Alpine um, up to their project entrance. Their, their entrance is on Alpine. They are going to have to improve Alpine Road, but when it comes to the, the turn, um, so I'm, I'm not sure on that. Any other questions for staff before I bring up the applicant? Okay. Um, the, applicant, the applicant's representative, Mr. Pressman. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, Mr. Administrator, Todd Pressman, 200 2nd Avenue South in St. Petersburg, Florida, number 451. I'm here with Eric Swanson. Eric is the land manager for AMH Homes, uh, which is a national home builder. Um, I do have a PowerPoint for you, which is up, if we can go through that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I also asked for extra time, which uh, I've been told by the clerk was approved. Uh, PDD 20-7448, you've heard from your staff. They're supportive and continue to be supportive of the request. Oh. Premise points. We have made pretty significant plan changes since the planning and zoning and heard from some citizens. This is nothing more than a small, very nice 27 unit subdivision supported strongly by your staff. It's designed really at workforce and family housing level, which I'll talk a little bit more in detail in Eric will. And critically, the FAR is substantially below what the future land use category is. We're less than half of what the comp plan calls for in the area. 
So as your staff walked you through, we're up uh, in the uh, northern part of the county um, along um, uh, Bell Lake Road, as you can see. This is an aerial, and the site is shown to you uh, on the aerial there. So the issue is R1 to MPUD, really, again, for very nice, small, 27 maximum single-family homes detached uh, with a small request of 10% reduction of parks, but we're making up for that with a tremendous buffer, uh, 9.45 acres. So as you can see, commissioners, the entire area is at a res six, six units per acre. We've reduced the number of units from 32, and it is to 27. That's my error. We have reduced it to 27 units from 32. And we've also increased the lot width from 35 feet to 40 feet. That was one of the concerns raised previously with a couple other concerns. So the site plan, as you can see, is the 27 dwellings. Everything to the north is buffer. And again, we've responded to the concerns that we've heard. Density proposed now is 2.85 units per acre. Future land use category is six units per acre. We're less than half of what called for in your comp plan. And this is the product. Um, Eric's company throughout the uh, country has done thousands of units. They're single family homes. Um, these are homes for rent. I'll go in a little bit more detail on that, which is a very unique element in the marketplace for affordable workplace homes or families and families that are moving through the community, sometimes the police, fire, military. So you can see these are their typical uh, uh, units. So some points in support. First of all, from your staff, the recommendation of approval. They tell you that is consistent with Pasco County LDC Chapter 400 zoning amendment and with application provisions of the Pasco County Comprehensive Plan. Res 6 comp plan intent is to recognize those areas suitable for single multiple family residential development, having a minimum density of six dwelling units uh, per developer acre. Again, we're 2.5 acres, way below that standard. This MPUD provides clustered smaller lots to preserve a lot of natural wetlands, provides an upland buffer around the wetlands, and provides neighborhood parks and over 30% open space. So if you look to the north, that is a 200-foot buffer that your staff referred to, which comprises roughly about a third of the development and you can see two of the park areas on the south side. There will also be a six-foot six foot fence surrounding outside wetlands or outside areas that are not permitted. Anywhere that fence is permitted, typically a fence will be provided. We also asked a separate independent planner, uh, AICP planner, and transportation planner to look at this request. And we submitted the record, his report, which tells you the rezoning MPUD is consistent with the future land use plan and development of single family homes is compatible with the surrounding development area and would not adversely affect nearby properties which are also developed with residential homes. Your Pasco comprehensive plan, these are really important criteria or policies in your plan. They note to ensure opportunities of adequate supply of all types of housing, which this is a really bit unique type of housing which is needed. Designation of sufficient densities to achieve a variety of housing types. And third, to encourage residential infill in urban areas. We meet all three of those and we follow that direction. I'm going to turn this over to Eric. He's going to explain to you a little bit about the product and how successful it's been for thousands and thousands of units in the United States. Eric, please. Uh, thank, thank you so much, Todd, um, and, and members of the commission. Uh, again, my name is Eric Swanson. I'm the land manager for AMH Development or American Homes for Rent in the Tampa Bay area. Um, what we've decided to do is pull out some facts about our residents. Um, on average, our household income uh, per household is over $100,000. Um, predominantly, I mean, we, we pretty much hit every segment of our demographic, but the bulk of our lion's share is um, in older millennials that have families um, between the ages of 35 and 40. And they average about two to three years um, in any given location. Um, because of the recent changes in tax law and um, how we can deduct our um, interest on our mortgage, it's creating um, some opportunities that um, residents are looking for, um, particularly with our uh, product as a viable alternative. Um, for our, I guess the foundation of our business thesis has always been to be the anti-apartment. Um, so we really, and these are some of the elements that um, we address with all our communities. No attached walls, three, four, and five bedrooms, um, brand new home construction, having a garage and a, a driveway. As a standard, <coughs> two car garages on all our product. Um, 
yard storage space and obviously sense of community and building the best communities we can and with the attention to livability. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. Uh, Mr. Chairman, commissioners, the reason we raise these points in much greater detail than your planning and zoning is because some of the citizens that, didn't in, that were in attendance and your planning and zoning board harped on and stayed on and quite frankly got stuck on the rental aspect, which we didn't go into detail. So we want to be sure we came today to explain to you exact product, how it's been successful, and who it serves. Uh, so in summary, we made significant project changes down to 27 units and a larger lot width. The housing type is well accepted, particularly for workforce housing. We have your full staff support and your experts in the staff. Uh, our independent professional planner agrees. Uh, we are far below the FAR. We're providing a tremendous buffer to assure compatibility. And the comp plan calls for varied housing types uh, staff says consistent. I will tell you in wrapping up, Mr. Chairman, that we did contact by public notice 71 separate homeowners. I have spoken with, I would say approximately four or five or six over the last couple months uh, to make sure folks are aware of what we're doing and what was occurring. Um, and I do have uh, one letter to put in the record from the applicant's attorney uh, regarding some specific points. If I may put that in the record, sir. Can you motion to receive a file, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thank you. So, Mr. Chairman, we're here to answer any questions you might have and be happy to answer any questions from the public. If okay, before here. I go to public comment, um, commissioners, questions for the applicant? And questions for the applicant? No, you know, I read the ULI reports, and uh, this is, this is a, a need that's being, um, I'm seeing this all over the country, right? So, uh, this is the second one. We have another one coming in off of. State Road 54 in front of Ivy Lake Estates. So, yeah, it's a definitely a trend. My my son is moving out of New York City uh, and renting a house. So. Other, trend. thank you, Commissioner. Any other questions at this time? With that, I will go to. Mr. Public. Chairman, I'm sorry. Just to add one more fact to you: the price point of the homes in terms of the price point are typically between 259,000 and 345,000. So that's the market. Uh, in terms of the value of the homes, although, of course, again, they're for rent. But I wanted to give you all the encompassing so you understand the product. 259. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I do have a number of people that have signed up to speak. So what I will do at this time, since we have a number, um, the clerk is going to read out three names at a time. I'll ask you all to please line up at that time. If you have not signed up, uh, when I get to the last person, I'll ask you to line up at that time. And after that, I will cut off public comment. Um, if you have not been sworn and you would like to speak, you need to be sworn in. So if you have not been sworn in and you'd like to speak, I'll ask that you please stand at this time if you were not sworn in. Okay, everybody that's speaking has been sworn, so thank you. Mr. Clerk. Uh, Troy Gottschall. Bring them all. Three. Uh, David Hodieri. And Margaret Gottschall. Good afternoon. Just name and address for the record, please. Troy Gotcho, I live at uh, 22434 Ladera Lane, just north of the uh, proposed subdivision. We have a small PowerPoint here. Um, let's see if I can do this right. So that's a little closer view of the area. They, they showed you a wider view. The area in question or the proposed subdivision um, is that area in red. Not sure how this works. Excuse me. Yeah, this area it. here. Mm -hmm. I live in the area right there. That is my home. That's 2.06 acres north of the property. My biggest concern with this whole project is that the size of the lots do not meet what is in the surrounding area. Um, back in the planning commission meeting on 1121. Uh, one of the members of the Planning Commission asked staff, what is the average lot width in this area, including the MPUD, and they said it was 80 feet. These are half that. The math says that a 40 by 110 lot comes out to 0 0.09 acres. I don't know if you can read those or not, but those are some samples of the size of the lots uh, adjoining this property. The smallest ones would be in the older uh, PUD below, they are 0 0.31, 0 0.33, 0 0.28, roughly three times or more the size of the lots that are being proposed. 
they talk about the density of the entire development being somewhere around three or so per, per acre. The problem is, is that when you look at this in detail, you take out the buffer, and I know technically that's not the way you do the calculation, but there is the size of the development. And if you look to these lots being 0.5 acres, 0.58, excuse me, roughly two of those homes is larger than the seven lots that are adjacent on the other side of that drainage property. That's, uh, that's just not acceptable to us. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't match anything in the area. Um, it's really gives us a heartache. Excuse me, did I break this thing? <laughs> there. Anyway, I was gonna go back to one point that Mr. Pressman made that they have changed since the planning commission recommended for denial the size of their lots and the number of units. There's an email from Mr. Pressman uh, last week, I believe it was, or two weeks ago, <coughs> that says that they've made these changes. There's an email on November 14th prior to the Planning Commission meeting that says their target is 27 homes and 40 foot wide lots. So there were no changes made. That, that, that was a falsehood given to you folks. Um, I'm going to yield my time to David. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Dave Hoderin. Um, I'm at 22418 Ladera Lane. And that's in Land Lakes, Florida, obviously. Um, <clears throat> I've been a resident 32 years in Pasco County, 17 at this address. And um, I have some of the same concerns as Mr. Gotchell. Um, we actually have one more thing going up there. It's on the end of that. Um, <clears throat> I asked, what, one of the main questions I ask uh, is what need is truly being filled here, right? Um, we have a high density subdivision going in to our rural community and again, it doesn't match what is currently in place. Um, <clears throat> the numbers pr proposed by the developers, obviously on gross, uh, gross land versus the actual net. If you were to compile the lot sizes, you could fit 11 of these lots in one acre, really, if you actually did the net version of it. Um, <clears throat> so we're really worried about you know, the look and conformity of these houses being in our neighborhood and also uh, doing research, we found out AMH development, or the developer um, <coughs> actually rents these homes out. So, and he made you aware of that. Um, <coughs> obviously, <coughs> rentals concern us. Um, we, uh, but with doing some research, I actually found a Tampa, Tampa Bay Times article, and uh, it was from January 22nd, and I have that on there. Right here, I highlighted some of the areas, but the main thing is the declining percentage of home owner occupied, home, or excuse me, owner occupied homes uh, in the area in Pasco County has gone from 54% to 47% from 2008 to 2019. And that's with increasing 45,000 homes in the county during that time frame. Um, so it's a little concerning, and obviously, uh, there's some quotes in there from uh, Sheriff Nako talking about. Uh, attracting illegal activity and becoming eyesores in the neighborhood for rental properties. Um, and I understand they're gonna have, uh, their company's gonna support the neighborhood for a while, but how long does that stay in place for? Do we have anything in place to make sure that they're gonna be taking care of these homes? Um, we don't know that. And what happens if they do sell a few of these homes? Then now it's no longer gonna be a complete neighborhood of rental homes at that point. Um, <clears throat> And there was even concerns from the commission. You can see in there, you guys passed an ordinance uh, about rental homes because you are concerned about them. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else I have. Um, so again, my question is, what are we accomplishing here? One thing I think we're accomplishing is we're creating a revenue stream for a large national company of rental homes. Um, how much does it really help our community to put these in place? There's plenty of development all up and down the 54, 56 corridor with rental properties, uh, small homes, workforce homes, all those types of things. I don't think we need the change in this small little tiny neighborhood here. And I think that's it. All right, thank you so much. It. Thank you guys.
Good afternoon. Uh, name, name and address for the record, please. My name is Margaret Gotchel, 8231 Fall Glow Lane in Land O'Lakes. And I'm kind of taking this development from a senior citizen's point of view. As you know, there's quite a few of us in Pasco County. And I regularly use Alpine Road and uh, Bell Lake Road um, to go to and from my home. And the condition of the roads is certainly a concern, especially with construction and increased traffic. <coughs> Bell Lake Road has deep, uh, call them ditches, um, on the side of the road, um, actually adjacent to the properties that we're talking about. It's also just a two-lane road in that area, not a four-lane road. On the other side, uh, the east side of this particular property. Alpine Road is very narrow. It's deteriorating. <coughs> the shoulders on both sides are caving in. It would need tremendous work to accommodate the additional traffic. And of course, the construction equipment that's going to be going over these roads while this development is being constructed. So the roads are definitely my concern. I've had a lot of close calls on those roads myself um, <coughs> because of large vehicles or speeders. <coughs> Another issue with the um, transversing that area, um, and this one comes from the fact that I'm a retired school teacher and I did teach in the portable buildings at Land Lakes High School on 41. And we don't want to go backwards to portable buildings again. We built a new high school years ago, uh, and we built other schools in the area, and I think that we need to consider infrastructure. We need to consider our schools when we're adding housing at the rate we are going. And this particular housing development would have, I would assume, many school-age children amongst the residents. And then, of course, we're talking in an area that does have a wetlands that needs to be protected on that property, which I think the previous speakers talked about. You don't have usage of the total acreage for housing because it's limited by the wetlands so that it does cause some crowding compared to other houses in the area. So I think that between the wetlands and the roads, the commissioners need to um, consider so how the roads are going to be improved. That thank particular you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Karen Job, to be followed by Raymond McGeehan. And if, and after um, Mr. McGeehan, if anybody else wishes to speak, I'll ask you to line up at this time. Is anybody? Yes, please. Anybody? Yeah. Anybody? Yeah, you're fine. You don't have to sign up. I'm just asking you to line up. If anybody else is going to speak to this item, I'll need you to line up now, please. That way we know. Okay. One second, please. Okay. It's not it's not counting against your time yet. That's okay. <laughs> Good. I just want to make sure. Okay. Great. Yes, ma'am. Um, name and address for the record, please. Okay, my name is Karen Job, and I live at 4200 Alpine Road in Land O'Lakes. Um, I'm a and fourth generation. And you have been sworn. Yes, I have. Thank you. Um, I'm a fourth generation Floridian. I was born and raised in Hillsborough County and grew up in Tampa. At the age of 21, um, the, my boss said, you need to invest in property. I went, we came into Pasco County. I bought 5.6 acres on Alpine Road, and that has to be one of the proudest moments of my life. Um, in 19, that happened in 1967. In 1973, my parents were looking to move, so I gave them lifetime estate on that property. They lived there from 1973 until they passed away. In the 52 years, I've seen growth and development, and I embrace change. Um, 
my concerns, again, the lot sizes are inconsistent. Um, while they're uh, the impressive presentation for workforce housing, um, that the fact that they are rental properties is a huge concern of mine. Um, I have at the north end of the lake, because I do live on Banjo Lake, at the north end of my lake, there are, I don't, I apologize, I don't know the number of units, but there are a large, uh, been there about 30 years, apartment units that have been in foreclosure and in disarray and in need of repair. Um, we have had theft coming across the lake from that, from that housing development. Um, this development property, I was excited at the beginning because I um, did not know, again, the number of um, units or the number of um, the fact that they were rental properties. Now, um, irrelevant to this, but important to me and something that you will be addressing soon is on the east side of my lake, I've just been notified by the county. You're good by my county that there are 54 townhomes gonna to be um, built on the east side of my lake on Banjo Lake Road. The traffic on Alpine and Bell Lake cannot handle it. My grandson gets off the school bus, he steps in a ditch to get across the road, to get across Alpine to come, to come home. I want this property that we have I want to leave it to my grandson. I want him to live in Pasco County and enjoy what I have enjoyed. Um, the edge of my property is less than 25 feet across, I'm across the road, but less than 25 feet from the entry. The entrance off of Alpine Road, again, I think is something that is not in favor of Alpine Road, as the lady had just mentioned, the width of the road. Now, I, I don't know that it's in the, the disrepair that was implied, but it is a narrow road. Thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Name and address for the record, please. Okay. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, Raymond J. McGeehan, 4636 Alpine Road. Okay. Land can you, and, and I'm sorry. Can you just pull that mic up just a little bit? Yeah, there you go. Land of Lakes. Right. Yeah, thank well, you, 4636 Alpine. And you've been sworn. Oh, I already did that. Yeah. <laughs> you need to state for the record that you've been sworn when you, you, when you give your name okay. and address, okay. and whether you're not, yeah. you've oh, been okay. sworn. He's good. <laughs> we got it? Yes, sir. Um, the way, I, 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 I'm for progress. I, I'm happy with Pasco County, the way they have been doing things, and uh, it's exciting to see Pasco grow the way it has. My family, we go back to the early 1920s. Uh, uh, um, at, at any rate, so I'm for progress, but the road, <laughs> is, there's no sidewalks. The road is caving in, caving in literally, okay? Um, traffic is, is, is gonna be terrible. Uh, and so that's my big concern is that um, to put a project like this, in a section, you're just looking for major problems. Um, I'm sure you all can see that. Uh, it's just ludicrous that, uh, that they are trying to build this type of a project in that area at this time. Now, if the infrastructures were a little bit better, and Bell Lake is a very dangerous road, and uh, Alpine is even worse, there's not hardly a, a month goes by, at least I don't see one or two cars in the ditch. Okay, and the kids, there's no place for kids to get off uh, to walk or anyone to walk uh, on Alpine at all. So the entrance and something should be done uh, and uh, changed somehow. That's my main concern. Otherwise, I'm, I think, uh, you know, the project looks nice, but I don't know. It's, it's scary. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Yeah, Good afternoon. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon. Deborah Valdez, 4147 Alpine Road in Land O'Lakes. And you've been sworn? <laughs> yeah, you've been sworn? Yes, I yeah. have. I stood up and yeah. Thank you, was sworn in. Um, I've actually lived in Pasco County in Land O'Lakes my entire life, as well as um, my sisters. Um, I um, currently live with my mother, um, who is 85 years old. The property that is adjacent to this 
um, just to the north, we've had in our family almost 100 years. We um, still live on a portion of it. We had it split up into acreages, so this type of thing wouldn't happen. Um, we actually um, also, I don't know if you all are aware, um, had a petition where we have um, over 300 people sign the petition to um, not have this type of development go in. Um, 356 signatures we have. I don't know if you would like this, but I need a motion to receive a file. Motion to file. If you may, and then you can hand it to the clerk if you don't mind. Right here. Right there. Yes, ma'am. Um, Drainage is also a huge issue. Um, every time it rains, right there where our properties are, in the gullies, um, they get full. We get almost like lakes around our houses. Um, so that's an issue as well. Um, my issue that I have um, it goes to safety. I have, a, you know, those of us that have children, um, there are signs that say lock your doors because there's, you know, people that are out there wanting to break in your car. I mean, this is something that growing up in Pasco County and Land Lakes, I never had. Um, my son was almost taken off the street when I was having a conversation with my neighbor. Somebody pulled up, opened the door, then they saw us. He was maybe 10 feet in front of me. So it's a concern, a rental versus somebody who has the pride that owns their home. Um, to me, there's a, there's a difference in that. Um, I'd like to see backup that shows why we have, you know, why there's a need for something like this. You know, such clustered houses that aren't even for sale, that these people don't get a pride in owning their home. They rent it. And what's to say, what's, the, what's their, their median, um, income. like, income? Thank you. I'm nervous. Okay. Um, You're good. <laughs> What's their medium income? You know, who, who's going to be living there? Who's going to take pride in their property? You know, what type of neighbors are we going to have? Because we have fantastic ones now, as you can see behind me. You know, that's basically what I have for today. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. And commissioners, I didn't call that motion a second ago, so let me call the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. What motion? That was the receiving file. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thank you. Sir, um, good afternoon. Name and address for the record. You've been sworn? Yes, I have. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. My name is Kurt Leskel. I live at 4252 Alpine Road. I'm at one of the uh, larger properties to the north that was referenced. I also happen to be the sole property owner on Land of Lakes, who, in the wisdom of the uh, Corps of Engineers, now has a Zone C flood property. I've had to take out flood insurance on my property where I never had to before. I've been living at this location for 27 years. About 25 years ago, I stood before your predecessors in opposition to a development that was proposed across from me on Alpine Road, where a developer was looking to put in 102 duplex units in a scheme where they would be available for people in North Carolina to live half the year and then half the year down here. Obviously, 33 acres and 102 units was a very, very dense development. We successfully opposed it. Your predecessors saw the wisdom of that. And instead, they put up a number of beautiful single-family homes. It's wonderful. We love it. They're great additions to the neighborhood. But despite the fact that they put in two retention ponds and a connection of a series of drainage ditches, that neighborhood is constantly enduring flooding at every significant rain. And that flooding goes onto my property. I lost 160 maple trees in the backyard that died out due to flooding. Root rot and trunk rot, they had to be taken out. I've had to re-landscape re my backyard and put in drainage swales to try to keep my backyard from being flooded where it never was before. And this is despite the fact that a development that was proposed for 102 was taken down to 20. The best laid plans of engineering, and by the way, I'm a retired engineer, the best laid plans seldom come off the way they do. And my position here is that putting this many homes 10 feet apart from each other on that small a piece of property is going to overload that wetlands, which feeds into the wetlands and the drainage system that feeds into Banjo Lake right behind my property, and is going to have an impact. We don't need rental properties. We've had rental properties. It's now I think Chelsea Meadows is the development that was referred to at the north. At one time, that was Section 8 housing. It's been apartments. It's been under, I think, at least six or seven ownerships in the 27 years I've been there. Now I believe it's condominiums. It's under massive re 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 uh, uh, development because it went to pot. And it went to pot because it went to uh, too many different owners. 
What guarantees do we have that this company who's going to come in here and put in these rental properties is going to maintain those rental properties the way we property owners want to? And what's going to happen when they decide to sell it to some other company who doesn't have the same interests at heart? And then they sell it, and then they sell it, and we're left holding the bag. I ask you to show the wisdom that your predecessors do. Leave this area, the quiet, small, low-density residential area that it has been for the last 50 years. Thank you. Thank you. And this will be our last speaker. Name and address for the record, and have you been sworn, sir? I have been sworn. Thank you. My name is James Litton, 4013 Aladar Court, which is uh, adjacent on the west side of the proposed development. You can see the uh, lines of the lots on the far left side of the uh, drawing. So uh, my interest is leaving it R1 for obvious reasons. It's R1 now. Uh, all the properties to the west, north, and mostly to the east are all R1. Um, you know, interested in uh, you know preserving property values. Uh, traffic at at Collier and 54 is a mess. You add uh, you know this many more houses, it'll just uh, you know add to the congestion that's already up there. Also at Bell Lake Road and 41, and along Bell Lake Road in general, where it's really busy for a two-lane road already. So that's really all I had, just to, you know, to echo some of the concerns here and just preserve my R1 property values. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, so it is back to the board now. I'm going to double check one more time. Is there anybody? Well, we can't. You already spoke. <laughs> it's a guess. It's a, you can't do it. The county attorney is going to tell you after I do. So we can't, we can't speak from the audience. Um, uh, did, we want, yeah. did the attorney well, want to address I, I, some of the comments? I, I was going to ask that too, but it's, yes. Did you have any other questions? Well, after or? he speaks, I may have some, but. Okay. Go ahead and respond, and then I, I have some questions, and then Steph. Did you have something, David? <laughs> yeah, just a, a quick clarification. Okay. Um, there were two conditions in the conditions of approval that needed to be adjusted. Um, one was 21A.1. It still had the old lot dimension of 35 feet, so that needs to switch to the 40 feet. And then condition number 22, it still said the original home amount of 32. That needs to switch to, say, 27, just so you're aware. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Patrick, while you're up there, if I may. Yes. Is, this, is, this project is a little unusual. Are there anything in the conditions that really require them to do a rental community here? Or to or to There's do what they've what they've described they're doing to the board. When I scan through the conditions of approval, this could be a regular single family yeah. uh, platted uh, project. Correct. Uh, I, I believe that is what they're intending on doing, and that's I think what was proposed to us as well. So we move forward. This being single family residential uh, platted subdivision. Okay. So, so, question on that. Go ahead. Attorney? We never ask when a, someone's coming in with a neighborhood whether they're for sale or rent. I mean, that's That's not, correct. That's not something we take into consideration. And, and, that, was, and that was why I asked the question it is that there has been a lot of discussion about rental, this being a rental community. But that's... Um, and I routinely, when this is a multifamily apartment or condo issue, I tell you, you can't consider that as, as part of your land use decision. And the same would apply here. That's why I wanted to make sure that there, because this was unusual, whether there was something that required them to do the, what, they, what they presented to you in their PowerPoint. Um, so my advice would be, this is a land use decision. This is, this is should be considered like any other single family development that might come before you. Um, and that you have to weigh that against whether or not it's compatible with the rest of the, the adjacent property. Well, while our planner is up there, um, when I'm looking on the map, and I've got it on my iPad, sure. up, and I'm looking at Alpine, mm -hmm. and I look at Golden Lane, am I saying that right? Uh, where is Golden? Can Lane? you put? A, can you go up to the, uh, to the Google Earth or something? Is that a mobile home park that yes. I see there? 
So we have a mobile home park right across the street from these homes. And then I look down Alpine and I see an apartment complex. And then I look to the right before my battery dies and I see something called uh, Eagle Crest and Sable Ridge. Hey, How big straight. are those lots? Yeah, hold on. Let's look. Can I let her get to the? Yeah. Real quick. Just, All right. Oh. So not that. that I want you to go to Google Earth. Be. Go to Google Earth and zoom. You know, Google Earth. But don't, don't get the aerial on the slide that has that. Don't have an aerial on the slide. Yeah. So I heard someone say this was the country, and but I am looking at very dense neighborhoods here, except for the one street over here on. Uh, Ryan Road. I mean, there's other people that have some large parcels, but that doesn't mean they can't subdivide no, them later. Um, so I see one one street. I don't know what what. Okay, so Golden is so so. You see where the red square is? Um, okay, I zoomed in. Um, it's just right there on the right. Um, is a mobile home park. Next next. You cannot talk from the audience. I'm sorry. So I see it. I am seeing at least two, four, six, eight, eight trailers. I don't know. So I don't know. The, for me, I'm okay with this. Um, I look at Longleaf and I see townhomes, garden homes, lot, you know, acre homes, half acre homes, and smaller. And uh, their property values have done fine. So I, I think it's unfounded that you to be worried about um, this affecting your property values and my guess is if this is going to be a rental community which is something that we can't really take into account they're going to want to protect their investment and make sure that their property is kept up to standards we also just passed a rental registry ordinance so um, we have um, some oversight as well on rental property that wasn't here before uh, so I I get, I get that Alden Aladare Court may have bigger lots and, and Bryan Road, but everyone else to me has a lot smaller lots. I did, I did wonder if the developer could um, switch it around a little bit, if you can go back to their layout interior. They, they have the seven lots back up to Bell Lake and then there's two and the two and three parcels on Alpine. I don't know if the entrance can't, you know, I don't know the area that well, but can, can those two sections be swapped so that entrance is off of Bell Lake and then maybe that relieves the problem of Alpine as a thought. So those are kind of my, my questions. Okay, is, is any other questions for staff before I bring the applicant back up? Just, just Go ahead. a quick comment, yes, Chairman. I just, and I know we, we obviously can't consider it, but I just want to confirm with the county attorney. I know because one of the residents brought it up, and it, I think it is relevant here. As far as the rental registry ordinance, um, they would not be exempt from it. They would have to register mm -hmm. and, and so forth as part of, part of the ordinance. As a platted single-family subdivision, if, they, if the units were put to rent, then they would be required to to register okay. under the under that order which i yes. think is a is a is a positive mm -hmm. um so but again we can't make our decisions off that but i just thought it was good to have on the record just so mm -hmm. put maybe some of the residents at ease so commissioner starkey to answer your question uh we generally like to see access from local roads before collector roads so that's why um we're, they're using alpine to access um to the condition of alpine they have to improve alpine road okay. up to their project entrance all right so i missed that they would so, have to improve the road. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That was going to be one of my questions about what they're doing. But I'm going to let the applicant come up and speak on that. So if the applicant can come. <clears throat> can I ask staff's question first? Okay. Oh, um, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. On, on our chart, it says north, south, east, and west as far as what the locations are, and it talks about the densities. To the south, it says NPUD. I think Mr. Stark was pointing out. What's, what's the ratio there? On Which? The, on the lots to the south. There's yeah, so there. what's how many lots per acre are, are built there? You know, I, I'm not sure off the top of my head. I did look at lot sizes. Um, I, I do recall them being around 67 feet, 70 feet wide on the southern side. Um, I think they're a little denser on the west side. Um, or sorry, the east side, side. But I don't know the specifics. What's the flu then? They're the, all it's all six. res 6. They're so all, it, the whole area. The whole entire area is res area. 6. Okay. 
before I call the applicant back up. Any other questions <laughs> for staff again? Okay. I will let you respond first, Mr. Pressman, to the speakers, and then some of us will have some questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and the board members and citizens who are here. We have great respect for them, uh, of course, for yourselves as well. Um, so in regard to the many traffic issues that were raised, as you heard, Alpine Road is going to be improved. There's also a left turn lane proposed on Bell Lake for access on the Alpine, so that will address okay, those. Okay, let me, can I stop right there? Yes, that sir. was going to be one of my questions since you brought it up. Okay, it will be improved, so explain the improvements. Uh, Alpine Rail will have to be improved the standards from Bell Lake up to the access point into the subdivision. Okay. And going east, there will be a left turn lane onto Alpine. So there will, you, will, you will be adding a left turn lane? That's in the conditions, yes, sir. That's in the conditions, okay. Okay. Um, secondly, let's remember, I'll go through this quickly. This is a small subdivision, 27 homes, very small. There's absolutely no indication from your staff or our transportation planner, and you guys require a lot of transportation planning these days, that there's any problem, any issue, any impro imposing or encroaching element for anyone in regarding traffic. Um, I will remind you as well, we noticed 77 um, separate individuals for the public notice, and I know there's some folks here. I do want to clarify the record. You were shown an email that I saw was dated November 24th. That was several days following the planning and zoning, which was the 21st, and it was at the, right after planning and zoning, we decided we'd need to listen to comments from the county and citizens, so we made those changes. That's a reflection of my continual work communication-wise with residents. You can see some of my emails and some of the materials that the residents had, and I always have great respect for residents, and we're happy to answer any question to work with them. Um, the other part of what I heard is that what residents would like with respect to them is complete homogeneous uh, area, um, which of course, if you look at your Res 6, that would be the homogeneous level. But I'll mention quickly again, the comp plan says three things, ensure opportunities for adequate supply, designation of specific densities to achieve a variety of housing types, and encourage residential infill. Um, so in regard to your staff uh, indications and the individual planner, um, AICP planner, we believe that we're compatible and we work with the residents and we hope, hope to have your support. So, um, so I, I do have a few questions and I'm gonna go ahead and go to the other board members after that. Um, you mentioned, one of my questions was road improvements. You mentioned that, that is in the conditions. Um, I know our, our decision can't be made on whether this is a rental property or not, but since it was brought up, mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask. Um, so what's in place to manage the property? Um, obviously, there will not be a HOA there because, I can, okay, I'm gonna assume there can't be an HOA, but um, what assurances do we have that this property will be managed, manicured, lawns mowed, et cetera? Eric will respond to that, Mr. Chairman. So I, it really comes down to our business plan. Um, and one of the things that we actually do sell, which is a lifestyle. Um, we market all our new home construction uh, within Tampa Bay with uh, weekly lawn service. Okay. Um, we have interior and ex exterior paint, up, paint uh, touch ups. Um, our tenants have, and I mentioned this earlier, um, average household income of over 100,000. Credits, I didn't mention this, but credit score over 650. Okay, I was gonna ask, okay. Yeah, um, but general upkeep and maintenance is probably gonna be superior to an individual homeowner. Um, we, a part of our operations is, is really more of a mature uh, property <coughs> maintenance division that comes in and services the, our properties on an ongoing basis. So give me the price point, or the rental. Hmm. If, let's just assume this was a rental property, what would you be renting these for? I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah, well, if you're, if you're average, if you're, if you're stating that the average income, household income is 100,000, I can make an assumption, but give me a rough idea if you had a similar project somewhere else. Um, uh, give or take around 2,000 a month. Okay. Okay. 
so <clears throat> it's kind of public knowledge that I'm not a fan of high-rise apartment complexes, right? I mean, I think we all know that. Really? <laughs> Just a little bit. So, I mean, I, again, I know this isn't going to um, satisfy the residents, but it, I am at least thankful that some people are listening and not wanting to put a high-rise um, apartment complex up, on, which I think you're aware of. And I don't know if this was ever considered at, at any time, but I had a sneaky suspicion there might have been considered at one time for that project, whether it be this ownership or to others. Um, so I am happy with that because well, I don't need to give my reasons. I've given it a million times before. Um, well, I had one more, but go ahead, commissioners. I think Commissioner Mariano, you had a question. Um, sidewalks. I mean, that road is extremely narrow. Uh, you're going to have kids probably looking to get a bus stop somewhere along the way. They're going to have to get there. Um, do you have any plans for the sidewalks on the edges of your property that abut not only Alpine but Bell Lake? Um, I will, and maybe staff could also attest to this. Um, we've incorporated uh, sidewalks. If I may, I'll interject. Staff is. With regard to Patrick, I did ask him. He indicated sidewalks are required. Is, it, is that correct, Patrick? And he's shaking his head yes. From the outside borders of the property, not only inside the property, but outside. At, at least along their side of the property. I'm not sure about the other side of the road. Um, no, no, I, I'm assuming. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Al Alpine or Bell Lake or both? Uh, both. Yeah. Commissioners, any other questions or comments at this time? Nothing? Mr. Yeah. Chairman, I, yes, sir. I will remind you because of the, because of the dialogue that you had. Mm -hmm. um, once you approve this, these don't have to be the people who develop it. Right. So if there are concerns you have about how they are going to operate this, they need to be stipulations on the project. Well, the, okay. That's a good point. Having said that, what's before you is a single <laughs> is a right. single family. Well, well that's what. That. So, well, because go ahead, please. Is a single family house uh, a subdivision? Now, what's different is you have conditions of approval that may need to be modified please, because okay. it talks about having a homeowners association um, let me get back to where we are because that's typically what you're dealing with um, that's true okay while he's looking that up go ahead yeah mr oakley i'm just noticing there uh, 3.40 dwellings per acre which is a lot less in residential property that we look at all the time. We look at more, all these developments coming are like five units per acre. Okay. And this is a lot less than that density. Okay. So it's a less density than what we normally look at in a residential area. Okay. okay. So to your point a second ago, um, Mr. Steinsteiner, um, in reference that we are looking at a single family home project. Um, and you made it, you know, the comment to me was maybe some type of insurances. Could there be a fear that this could go vertical and possibly be a multi family no. project? I just want to make sure. Okay. There's no, I mean, you, you have stipulations that say this okay. is a single family development. Okay. Uh, the, the comment that I was making was your inquiry to the applicant regarding um, how they were, how the lots were going to be maintained, and his Correct. response was, "Our business plan." Okay. Uh, that's that's the only that's the only reason that that that, that discussion came up. Okay, so that's a good point. So if I get the applicant come back up, then again, so what what assurances can we put into? Because you're stating it, there, you stated there's an HOA. Well. So the standard condition here is the developer shall create a mandatory homeowners association, property owners, condominiums, merchants in the form of a not-for-profit corporation registered with the state of Florida or approved by the Board of County Commissioners, a community development district. 
I'm not sure how that fits with their business model, mm -hmm. but that's what the stipulation is that's in, that's in their their project. So the, that that tax is applicable to any subdivision within Pasco County, um, and it's used as a mechanism for um, subdivisions, as well as the Southwest Florida Water Management District and how it regulates uh, common or open space tracks, as well as drainage. So you have and yes, so we affect we we utilize HOAs to be able to um, uh, we set them up and we manage them as well. Okay. Okay. So, to, so that, would be, to, that the would be the mechanism. That would be the mechanism. The commissioner, the chairman's question should have been that your HOA would would be providing that groundskeeping, not that that was your business plan. Well, that's the mechanism you'll be I using so. to maintain Correct. or be through an HOA. My apologies. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. In front of the question, if I could, on on the development on the inside part. Yes, sir. You've got a pretty much of a loop road going around. Is it going to be a sidewalk in front of all the homes all the way around there, so the kids can let's say ride bikes around through there? Yes. Or? Yes. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? I don't see any, so it is to the board at this time. What is your prerogative? I'll move approval. Second. With the conditions. With conditions, yep. As modified by staff at this As year. As modified by staff. Okay, I have a motion and second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. All opposed? So, motion passes. <laughs> we are moving on to P6. P6. Mr. Chairman, Board of County Commissioners, Denise Hernandez, Planning and Development Department. On item P6 is PDD 207456. In the names of Gonzalo and Irene Martinez, it's a change in zoning from AC Agricultural District to an AR5 Agricultural Residential District. Um, I'd like, uh, on this item, if you want a full presentation, I'd like for you to call for public comment. It was pulled at the Planning Commission. However, it actually comes to you with a recommendation which is unanimous of approval with conditions from the Planning Commission and the Planning and Development Department. Okay. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, we do have proof of publication of this matter in the Tampa Bay Times on December 27th of uh, 2019. Okay. So you provide, just go ahead and ask for public comment. Do you want okay. to ask for Thank public you. comment? I do not have anybody signed up. Would anybody like to speak to this item, which is P6? Anybody like to speak to P6? Seeing none, back to you, Ms. Hernandez. Did you want a full presentation or is... I will leave it up to my board. Nope. Nope. I'm hearing no. Okay. This is basically a 10-acre parcel going to be divided into 5 .0, 5.02 or 5.04 acre parcels. Okay. Move approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. So that is it for the regular agenda. We don't have anything else that coming up well Commissioner Wells does chairman just real quick I don't know if you remember um, the gentleman that spoke last week uh, or two weeks ago was bringing up um, anyways traffic on 52 and some things that maybe we needed to do different so I happen to know the gentleman um, I know that he lives in Commissioner Mariano's district but I would like to if, if I need to make the motion or Commissioner Mariano I think to, to make a motion for Clint Wynn to be on the CAC board I think it would be great opportunity for him to learn more and for him to add a value to that board. I did speak to him, so I don't, I mean, I have a spot. I don't mind you making the motion if you wanted to have him take my spot, but but I would just, I'd like to make a motion so we can add Clint Wynn on the CAC board. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Uh, aye. Uh, all opposed, same sign, motion passes. We're adjourned. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman? Oh. Well, oh. well, we already did commissioner items, guys. No, no, I want, I want to talk they about had, the, they uh, I had two people already put on the census. That's going to move. Well, no, we're not going to do that now. We're, we need to do it next. Hey, she's we need to do it next My people are good to go. Yeah. I, <laughs> I would like to do them all at once so we could have that all submitted and we yeah. could have the list. Mr. Yes, Chairman, I just want to talk about the aquatic preserve real quick. Okay. I will. This will just take two seconds. I will call this meeting back to order. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, hey, Commissioner. That, I have 10 other things. Nope. This is it. Last thing we're doing right here. All right. From, from what I was informed, <laughs> okay, let's listen real quick. Uh, from what I was informed, it, the Aquatic Preserve did pass for the first reading up in Tallahassee. I'm going to recommend all of you 
please read the agenda that Commissioner Wells has prepared for us. Take a look and put your input in, not only on the House side, but the Senate side, uh, including Senator Simpsons as well. Okay. Let me know what you're thinking. Mr. Biles? Yeah, the sponsor actually called me after we adjourned, and we talked briefly, and I told him we had some comments and would be working with him, and he was willing to work with us to get our concerns addressed in the legislation. That was the House sponsor? Yes, sir. Okay, the House sponsor or his staff to contact No, him. he called me. Oh, we did, directly. okay. Yeah, he called me, okay. and we talked right before lunch. Who okay. is this person that's sponsoring this? Uh, Dr. Dr. Ralph Masulo. Yes. And who is that? Yeah, she's from Cit He's Citrus one County. You with your eye. Hmm? When you were up in oh, I still don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's a, he's but, a okay. really, really nice gentleman. Fine gentleman to deal with. Okay. We'll, we'll work with him. <laughs> okay. All right. We are adjourned again. Yeah. I was, Kathy, I was stuck. Good job, Chairman.